Hi guys, so I think before I get into the meat and potatoes of this video, I should probably explain what this video is. This is a segment of my live stream directly after I realized that my graphics card for my Sims 3 game was not matched and I didn't feel like matching it during the stream. So instead, I wanted to kind of deep dive into a really great video that I watched beforehand this video of course is by asmara here on youtube she's a great sims content creator and she made a series called so what happened to the sims 4 now don't get me wrong asmara did a really great job i kind of wanted to go over it with my viewers in my live stream and add on to some of the things that she said and through the course of this discussion i pretty much hit every point that i have when i talk about why the sims 4 is the way it is and why it is such a downgrade from previous games and without further ado i hope you guys enjoy the rest of the live stream oh have you guys oh wait wait, wait. okay actually let's do a quick intermission here so there was a video I wanted to watch with you guys. Oh, I had it written down. So this is by um, Asmara on YouTube. And she is, I don't know much about her like as a person, but her video was so well researched. And I kind of wanted to like elaborate on her points that she made in the video. So I thought we could kind of um, watch it together. And oh, this video was really interesting too, playing The Sims 3 on Mac. If you guys have never like watched Sims 3, content on mac it's kind of interesting because okay you standings i love sims lore i really love sims lore she's like got good videos she gives me inspiration for like the uh sort of i guess like talking about the game sort of videos anyway okay so what really happened to sims 4 i want to talk to you guys about this one what is wrong okay let me know if the sound is okay too with the sims 4. wait this is this is this is her teaser for it <laughs> okay let's go to reaction so it's 33 minutes long i'm gonna put it on um speed to speed and then i'm also gonna turn subtitles on so just so you guys can amp it up a bit okay let me know what is wrong with the sims 4 i'll put it like that hopefully that's okay the sims 2 and 3 the sims 4 sims 1 the struggle is real sims 2 all the details sims 3 creativity about okay sims 4. Okay, wait, wait, wait. okay 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 so first first thing i'm gonna pause here and there um, so I can kind of like talk about some of the things that she's doing in the video. Do you plan on streaming every week or sometimes? I stream every Saturday at 7 p.m. EST. Okay, so this in specific, I'm sorry if like I miss like a chat message or, or whatever. I'm gonna commentate and like focus on um, kind of sharing my thoughts and opinions about Asmara's wonderful research that she did for this video. Now, before I start to commentate over the work that Asmara has done, I want to just say, I think her video is really well researched. I think she's been in the Sims community for a very long time and she's very versed, but there's some things that I was watching her video here that I kind of feel like we weren't getting, or she wasn't giving like viewers the, the full picture. So I'm gonna try and give like a fuller picture and kind of like elaborate on some of the things that Asmara says, because she makes some really, really good points. So first, let me, let me preface this video by she's, she's Throughout the course of this video, she's going to talk about uh, why or the kind of like the transition from Sims 1 to Sims 2 to Sims 3 to Sims 4 and like why the game is so tragic <laughs> and like why it why it is where it is right now. So she did she did a really um, well researched video. And so anyway, getting into like the first thing, I'm going to restart the video. What is wrong with the Sims 4? I love how I love how she uh it goes through like all the results over. here and like these w these are all videos we've all seen right like i've seen this one by lil simsy i've seen this one i've seen this one by amanda bb i've seen pretty much all of these and i like i like how she kind of the sims two and three the shows like other creators that have talked about this issue at length but she does a really good job at kind of going and chronicling throughout the sims history <laughs> this is a funny meme the sims two and three and the sims, sims four Sims 1, the struggle is real. Sims 2, all the details. Sims 3, creativity abound. Sims 4, dress up simulator. Okay, so this is another thing I wanted to talk about. Oh, this right here. Um, I Okay, so one of my biggest pet peeves, now let me move my microphone back. One of my biggest pet peeves about people talking about the Sims 3 is when they call it, this person down here says Sims 3 lag simulator. And I know that they're probably, <sighs> I know that they're, like poking fun at it and obviously they don't think the sims 3 is just like a lag simulator right um but the people that 
I see saying that The Sims 3 is a lag simulator are the same people that don't take the initiative and try and fix their game through matching their graphics card to their computer, uh, to the Sims 3 game or allowing the game to have more RAM. The people that, that call it a lag simulator, it really irks me because I'm really defensive over The Sims 3, right? Like I feel like The Sims 3 is my baby and it's probably because I make YouTube videos extensively on The Sims 3 and it's like my ultimate sims game um but yeah this the, the people that call it like a lag simulator are the same people that won't go and try and make the game run better right or they they play with you know gigabytes upon gigabytes of unmerged cc or uh you know some people are running it on a potato which i mean i feel like the sims 3 could even run on a potato fine but the potato computer exactly it's so easy to make the game work better you just you're just lazy exactly same or they never played it they just heard what others say exactly or they've seen they've seen like let's plays of it and they're like okay well i don't need to play the sims 3 i can just sit here and call it a lag simulator because um a cotton sock game game lags like a piece of shit when i have you know gigabytes upon gigabytes of, of cc and everyone that watches my videos knows that you know what i mean so anyway Let's just continue because if I if I commentate like extensively like this, we're, we're never gonna get through the video. But I'm gonna I'm gonna really try. The Sims Four, The Sims Two and Three. <laughs> this meme is really funny too. <laughs> this one's my favorite one. The Sims Four, building simulator with wasted potential. Uh, Crow Simmer. If you guys need help with your Sims Three game, go to Crow Simmer. Like he knows what this game, the ins and outs of the game. Like I swear to God, Crow Simmer, number one place you can ask for Sims Three help to getting it to work better. I know it's hard to find critiques for Sims 3, so people choose to nag about the lag. Exactly. Mary, you made a video on how to fix lag for Sims 3. Yes, yes, Alana. If you want to go and like get an extensive guide, Mary, you made a really good video on how to fix the and like match your graphics card, allow it to use more memory and stuff like that. So let's uh let's watch this video. Secret that the Sims 4 feels different to say the least. So today I'm going to explore if this widespread disdain for the Sims 4 is simply a bandwagon a lot of people in the community want to hop on, or is there truly something fundamentally wrong with this game? So, okay, Hi, so Mara, as Mara poses a really good question here, and this is kind of like the thesis that she'll follow throughout the rest of this video. So her her thesis is, is there something really wrong with this game or are people just ba bandwagoning, uh, shitting on this game? Now, I feel like the hate for Sims 4 is pretty justified because I just, I, there is not another game company in this entire world that could get uh that could get by and survive with regressing the game as much as ea did with the sims 4. in in any other community minus the sims community there would be massive backlash there would be people boycotting there would be people not buying future expansions dlcs whatever which is boycotting um but the sims the sims community like people in the sims community we don't boycott. That's the biggest problem is the only way to get money or to get things to like the head of the head of the CEO and stuff is to boycott stuff. Money speaks, money talks, money can make or break a situation, you know? I feel, I really feel like if we followed the steps of other communities that have had games that have regressed in progress, like The Sims 4 did when it came out, we would not be in this, this sort of situation that we are currently. The Sims 4 is so primitive. It feels, I mean, okay, Sims 4 without any expansions, without mods, feels primitive. It, it really does feel like a total regression in progress. And I think the only thing at this point that would mend the situation, and this the the managers and like Sim gurus, they're trying to to kind of make the game feel more alive through like memories and all that sort of shit that they've really been pushing lately, whatever those things are called, memories. Um, what did, what did they just come out with uh, for Sims 4? I don't know, whatever. They, they tried to do like a memory system and it was not, it was not it. It kind of sounded good on paper, but then when you got into like the meat and potatoes of the memory system that they did, just trash, just utter trash. Anyway, so money talks. And the, my bottom line is I think a boycott is in in order like i think that's what needs to happen but i just can't see it happening because i don't i feel like the the sims 
you know why it's because there's no other place for simmers to go there's no other place for simmers to play simulation games if, if we boycott then then we can't play simulation games at all period bottom line because ea owns a monopoly on the simulation industry at this current point in time that's why it's so important for paralives to come out so that there can finally be some fucking competition in this market there needs there needs to be somebody else to compete with ea so it gives them initiative and a reason to make better fucking games they can't keep doing this like dlc after dlc after dlc what is it? I think The Sims 4 has the most DLCs a game has ever had. Am I am I pulling that out of my ass or am I right? I'm pretty sure I'm right on that. And the trend has only gone in that direction throughout these past couple of years. The Sims 2 had DLCs, yes. Okay. The Sims 3 had more DLC than The Sims 2, yes. And I also have The Sims 3 store. But The Sims 4? The Sims 4 is on a whole other level of the amount of DLCs that that fucking game has had. It is... It is bonkers how many how many games that 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 the sims 4 has had and that kind of goes to show the quality of the of the shit that we're getting pushed out right it kind of it, it just it just speaks for itself i don't i don't mind dlc i don't care about dlc most games nowadays have a dlc model and i don't mind it as long as i'm getting the amount of content that justifies the price tag I'll gladly buy your fucking game. But until that point, I'm going to sit here and sell the seven C's and play The Sims 4. I'm not going to buy The Sims 4. <sighs> and thank you for the biddies. Thank you for the biddies, Mystical. I really appreciate it. I appreciate your 100 biddies. <laughs> I switched to The Sims 3 after the last uh, latest stuff pack. Sorry, I cannot read right now. <laughs> Paranormal. So um, I watched Pleasant Sims's review of paranormal and i thought it was an interesting concept but it doesn't seem like it does much for my sort of gameplay i don't care much about ghosts it's my thing my big thing is fairies werewolves and um vampires i love supernaturals i really do but when, you, when you're leading me along and you're you're splitting these these occult life stages up when you're putting ghosts in one expansion pack when you're putting vampires in another expansion pack and these are they're, they're two totally different, just disjointed DLCs. And the thing is, is they do not bridge that gap between those two occult life stages, right? In The Sims 3 Supernatural, there are so many situations where the occult can actually have occult specific interactions with each other. Uh, an example of this is fairies can play fairy tricks on any other sim you know what i mean so that's a interaction specific thing to just fairies right and another thing is is that when a werewolf goes up to just a regular old sim and shows them their teeth sometimes that sim will take a newspaper and start beating the werewolf with it that is an interaction specific uh that is a call specific interaction you know what i mean so they don't bridge the gap when they when they make these just disjointed elements in these different expansion packs. Bonehilda was robbed. Yes, Bonehilda was robbed. Bonehilda was the best in Sims 3, I think. I'm sticking with Sims 3. I'm not a fan of Sims 4. I don't like it. I don't like it either. I love the Sims 4. Building casts is what I tend to do more than gameplay. In Sims 3, I do more taking pictures. Cast and gameplay, building not so much. I agree with you i love sims 4 building and cast but i but that's not that's not a life simulation that's a building simulation that's a clothing simulation it's not it's not a life simulation and that's the biggest problem i have is the sims was founded on the basis of, of being a life simulator and here we are praising the game for building and cast building and cast is is a really small portion of my life you know like i'm not building houses right i'm not i mean i guess i am kind of changing my clothes but my my sort of thing is i want my life to be able to be represented in the sims 4 and building and cast you know is like how often am i building my own houses how often am i painting my walls how often am i changing my clothes and buying new clothes and and uh that sort of thing you know my my big thing is is i want gameplay to enable to be represented at representative of my life so which is kind of spell battles. <laughs> Sims 4 looks so cartoony. That makes me uncomfortable. <laughs> Sims 4 does look cartoony, but I think the I think the graphics are like the least of my concern. I wouldn't be mind ha I wouldn't mind having Sims 5 look similar to Sims 4. Like that is I actually really like um 
actually really like sims 4 graphics but they are cartoony i understand where you're coming from the biggest problem i have with sims 4 graphics is the walk styles walk styles are really weird to me they, they just they give the game like kind of like a whimsical feel and it makes it really seem like a child's game i don't know just my two cents let's continue watching miss asmara talk about her Wrong with chronicling of the sims 3 or sims not sims 3 but sims hi my name is mara and this games. channel is all about embracing the fullness of black womanhood through gaming creativity and conversation but before we get to talking about the sims 4 we first need to hop in our time machine and understand what the sims is why was this game originally created The Sims, as we know it today, was created by a man named Will Wright. Will was always really interested in robotics, computers, architecture, all those sort of technical things. Will Wright and his friend Jeff Brom started the game developing company known as Maxis in 1987 after they both were having trouble finding a publisher <coughs> for simulation games that they both wanted to produce. The game Will was working on was called SimCity, and he was inspired. I don't know how many of you guys have played uh, SimCity. I love SimCity so much. Will Wright, a king. <laughs> I agree. He had a really he he had a really good idea that like set the foundation for the rest of the sims games in you know forever and forever on um as Mara gets a little bit deeper into will but i want to talk to, about sim city here really quick because the sims life simulation aspect actually derives from sim city i think as Mara talks about it if i remember correctly but will was run wondering what would happen if we actually followed the lives of the citizens that are living in sim city so it's interesting that a lot of people have never played sim city um, but they've played Sims, you know, the Sims franchise because it's interesting to go back and see these seeds that you can kind of that that give a bigger picture to what the Sims was to become. Um, I played the most recent Sim City game that got released, and I remember that there was giant, there was giant issues with that release of Sim City. I played I've not played Sim City. I played Sim City that came out in 2011. Yes, I played that one too, Royal. I also, you know sailed the seven seas and i played uh sim city 4 definitely highly recommend sim city 4 there's ways you can get it like i just mentioned just sell the seven seas and you can get it but i i think it's it's really valuable for any sims player if you if you call yourself like a pretty dedicated simmer um and you're bored with sims 4 or you're kind of like you kind of want to stay in the simulation genre of games but you're bored of like sims 3 sims 4 sims 2 whatever highly recommend jumping into a sim city game because it's it's a night and day experience sim city is cute imo but there's better city simulators out there like city skylands i have city skylands bought i have not really gotten into the meat and potatoes of it i know like the general gist of it i just feel really like i'm betraying ea which i should not feel like at all because fuck ea but i really do feel like i'm betraying ea when i like go in and play city skylines or anything like that you know what i mean so uh one day one day i'll get i'll get into playing city skylines but i occasionally hop into like sim city the one that came out in like 2011 and stuff like that so highly recommend everyone out there if you think you're a dedicated simmer and you're bored of just you know life simulation sort of sims games um jump into the sim city it's really fun actually sims medieval was such a letdown i was so excited about the game but it wasn't how i thought it would be i love how the game uh i love how i love how the game loves in everything game loves in everything you just wish it wasn't so limited and building etc see i like sims medieval i think it you know what it is is i like sims medieval because it shows a precedent so in sims 4 strangerville strangerville is equivalent to sims medieval okay that's my that's my 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 thesis statement and um i don't know if you guys have ever played sims life stories or sims castaways but they are all parallel they're all like all of those are kind of adjacent to each other in terms of how you play them and i guess what i'm trying to say here is Look at Sims Life Stories, look at Sims 2 Castaways, look at Sims Medieval. What are all those games? All those games are separate. They're separate to their original foundation game, right? Sims 2 Medieval is nowhere connected. Like you do not need to have Sims 2 in order to play Sims 2 Medieval, right? The thing is, is with Sims 4, they tried to implement that sort of linear quest line into the sims game itself which i think is a really big fundamental problem i think that that is just so shitty because the way that strangerville in sims 4 plays out 
it's super linear the only way to play strangerville is to do the same exact quest line every single time right there's there's no you know like detours or like secret endings or like easter eggs you can get that changes that quest line it's so linear and i think when you implement that into the actual game itself rather than having it be an outside an outside game i think that that is a giant problem because people will feel they they kind of feel like they have to have strangerville because they're they're missing out on content right whereas when you make it its own breakoff game like they did with sims 2 castaways it, you know people they don't feel obligated to buy the game right because that sims 2 castaways content does not relate at all to sims 2 and something else is also i think it's kind of slimy that sims 4 strangerville builds off the original sims 4 game because it shows that ea had to do less work on strangerville because they already are implementing the basis of sims 4 into strangerville whereas with sims 2 castaways they had to make a whole brand new world they had to make brand new create a sim they had to make brand new build and buy there everything about sims 2 castaways was created brand new the only elements of sims 2 that are in sims 2 castaways is the coding obviously for like the graphics and how the you know the gameplay is the interaction menus etc etc whereas ea with sims 4 strangerville they basically you know hijacked sims 4 and were like hey we're just gonna throw in this really linear quest line and you know take it as you will you you, you can't really you can't really detour off the really extremely linear storyline but we're just gonna throw it in there so if you want it you can have it but people really do feel obligated to buy those sort of linear role-playing games because they're missing out on content and it's just kind of shitty it's just kind of shitty i was kind of excited for sims 4 stranger rail but was let down because the story was lackluster the story there's only one way to complete the story it's linear there, there's no there's no other outcomes right it, it sucks it really does suck i have played sims life stories i have it too i have the actual disc it's crazy i found it i found it like thrifty shopper a couple years ago and um i bought it and it was like my first ever kind of like deep dive into sims 2 although it's not it's obviously not even related to sims 2 i was hoping they would do those style of games for sims 4 but not a standalone and not a dlc to sims 4 i really like the I, I like the idea of a standalone i like it as a standalone i don't like it as a dlc because like i mentioned when you add it as a dlc people one feel obligated to do it and two ea will get lazy with it because they are like okay well this is just a dlc for sims 4 this isn't its own standalone so we can you know shit it out we can be lazy with it and it won't really matter all that much because you know it's not it's 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 its own dlc for the sims 4 so we don't have to work as hard because we already have other expansions for sims 4 all right let's get back into it Ars Mauro is going to talk to us about Will Wright, I believe. To create it after he found out that he had more fun building islands in his first ever game, which was called Raid on Bungling Bay. The original SimCity was released in 1989 and it became super popular. It sold like a million copies by late 1992. So from here on, Max has dedicated itself to developing a variety of simulation games. Many other sim titles were released over the course of the 90s, some of which being Sim Earth, Sim Ants, and even Sim Copter, which is the first game to ever feature the simlish language. At some point in this period, Will Wright had the idea to create an architectural design simulator. As I said before, he's always been interested in architecture since he was a kid, and this game would eventually become The Sims. The idea came about after Will had actually. It's kind of funny that the sims came from being an architectural uh design simulator because if you've ever played sims 1 you will know that the building is so bad like sims 1 building is atrocious it is so limited you can like build a box and like that's it you know there's no there's no like cool terrain things you can do you can't add like pawns i'm so sorry asmara I, I don't mean to like leave you off on like a really bad face i'm so sorry <laughs> um anyway so i was gonna say that the building in sims 2 or sims 1 is really stripped back so it's interesting that the idea came from being a architectural design simulator i don't know it's just interesting because when you think of building in sims you don't think sims 1 you think sims 4 right because sims 4 by far has the best building, so. His home and house fire, which is a little bit ironic that the Sims started from a house fire. Will wanted to understand like why people bought things and how their objects, their physical objects, affected their behaviors and their environment. But the higher-ups at Max didn't really see the vision that Will had for this game, so they ended up benching the project. SimCity 2000 came out in 1990. It's interesting that they benched the project, right? Because 
it's such a wide franchise today i feel like that's a that's a that's the story for like a lot of really successful people successful games successful movies is that the project gets you know thrown on the back burner and then it later gets like revitalized and it becomes this massive massive hit i can't think of any sort of other like success stories where the project was like thrown on the back burner and then became like a giant success later on down the line besides the sims um if i had some time i probably could think about it i was just watching this earlier yes she does a good job i kind of wanted to like go over it because i feel like there's a couple things that need to be said and especially in the sims 3 section i think i can go on for hours uh when we hit the sims 3 section i was kind of too young for when the sims came out just like the original base game sims but for Sims 3, I have a lot to say. Like, Overwatch, it was scrapped, and now look at it. Oh, is it? Is it? Was Overwatch scrapped? I didn't know that one. But I do know, like... Okay, so I take play writing, screen writing. Like, that's my major in college. And um, there are a lot of uh, stories within, like, the screenwriting industry of people that have had their scripts kind of, like, thrown on the back burner. And, the, the like, a uh, production company will buy them but never produce them. And then they find them, like, 10 years later and suddenly they make it. And it becomes, like, this giant, like, oh, my God, like, a giant series. So, like The Sims, it's interesting that it came from a project that was benched and, like, scrapped. Three And, like, its predecessor became extremely popular. It sold, like, 4.23 million copies worldwide. So, obviously, Will had sort of a talent for making these simulation games. And they were selling. People liked the type of games that Will Wright was creating. Electronic Arts gained ownership of Maxis in 1997. And with these newly acquired... By the way, this is when the game actually had a fucking soul. Funds, the architectural design game that Will had been wanting to make, got picked back up again and began to be further developed. So in February 2000, Max has graced us with The Sims, or what I'll be referring to for clarity. This, this is so nostalgic. I really want, like, the original Sims game framed, and I want to put it on my wall of, above my um, computer here, because I feel like this is such... This, this cover, this game cover means so much to me that I want it as an art piece on my wall. It really does mean so much to me. And I know it sounds like stupid. Like people are going to come in my room and be like, why the fuck do you have the Sims just framed on your wall? But this game really, really just ever like my entire life has has been an intertwined with the Sims. And to have this kind of like case just framed, I don't know. I feel like it'd be a really good idea. It doesn't be a different game, but then they switched it up a bit. The People Simulator, I know back when the game was actually about the people <laughs> she said the sims 4 failed because they made it about the player not the sims it showed me like a whole new perspective exactly yeah i agree they say as the sims 1 it was important that this architecture game turned life simulator featured controllable characters because as will wright states in this retro game <clears throat> interview, it was still fun designing houses for the sims but controlling your lives actually turned out to be far more compelling i kept the architecture tools in there but then i just really started focusing more on the people and objects and their behaviors and relationships so will Wright created the sims not only out of a love for building an architecture but out of a curiosity for human incentive and behavior particularly as it relates to their homes their relationships and their life decisions now that we know this let's take a look at how life simulation was done in the early sim games so i know a lot of simmers have an origin story where they're like i've been playing the sims since i was born or i've been playing the sims since i was five years old that's not my story <laughs> my first game <laughs> so, so I, I i also feel like this too a lot of people say oh my god God, I've been playing The Sims. Like, as Mara just said, um, for me personally, my first game, my first game on the computer was Sims 3. Now, I played Sims 2 on console, on, P on the PlayStation 2. My brother actually had a PlayStation 2 console and he went off to college and I, like, would go in his, I would sneak in his room and play his um, shooting games and I would just, like, flip through his all the cds he had for playstation 2 and one of the games lo and behold ended up being the sims and i loaded it up and instantly i could i played this game for hours and hours and hours and, and i would say i was about six or seven years old but i don't remember much about being six or seven minus the fact that that is really where my love for sims spawned and later on down the line I bought a microcomputer. I don't know if you guys know what a microcomputer is, but it's a computer that's about this big and it fits in like a really small space. It's meant for like offices and stuff. It's not meant for gaming. It is not meant for gaming. Um, but I had my brother sell the seven C's and he got me the Sims 3. And I remember I was really upset because I couldn't use online features because I sold the seven C's to obtain the Sims 3. Um, but even though I wasn't able to use the online features, I instantly was like entranced with The Sims 3. And so eventually down the line, I obviously ended up buying it. And I have like, I had a bunch of discs and, and that sort of thing. So 
The Sims 3 was the first game that I played, and then it was Sims 2, followed by Sims 4. I was about 13 years old when Sims 4 released, and I remember that first day coming home from, like, 8th grade or something, and I was, like, so excited, and I recorded, like, Let's Plays upon Let's Plays upon Let's Plays of Sims 4. And I've mentioned this before, but I... By the end of that Let's Play that I did, I was having such a hard time actually finding content to do in Sims 4 base game because Sims 4 base game is so fucking dry and boring. Like, there's nothing to do. <laughs> so that is, like, one of my biggest memories with the Sims 4 base game. Back all the way back in 2014, there was no toddlers. There was no swimming pools. The game was bare bones. It was dry. It was boring. Um... We were still using swatches for skin tones. Like, those were the fucking medieval days. Those were really the medieval days of The Sims 4. And I'm glad the game has somewhat progressed. Albeit, I feel like it's not seven years of progress. Like, between when The Sims 4 released and The Sims, like, till now, that is that does not seem like seven years of hard progress. Mind you, I want to remember, I want you guys to remember that... The Sims 4 has the biggest dev team ever, 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 ever. The, 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 the Sims team that is currently working on The Sims 4 is the biggest team in Sims history. So why the fuck is Sims 2 a better game than Sims 4 is in seven years? Sims, Sims 2 was all said and done by two or three years. We had everything. Okay, maybe not two or three years, maybe like four or five years. Then Sims, then Sims 2 was all said and done. So how is it that Sims 2 was a better game in four slash five years than Sims 4 is in seven years and potentially eight or nine years when the game finally is done and we fucking get Sims 5? Make it make sense. <laughs> I was looking for the family tree and I didn't realize I didn't have any. I appreciate your honesty with this subject so much. A lot of Simmers game changers tend to walk on eggshells. I think it's because I play Sims 3 that I don't give a fuck about Sims 4 and uh, I'll just say whatever I want because I will never, ever, 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 ever do a Let's Play of Sims 4 on my channel. I mean, I might make some videos of it here and there. Okay, probably... I don't know. I, I, I cannot... Okay, let me say this. I cannot foresee myself making a Sims 4 video but i won't say that i will never make a sims 4 video does that make sense like sims 4 is so dry i don't know what i could say about it that would make it interesting i suck ass at building i suck ass at making casts sims i don't know there's nothing in sims 4 for me personally that draws me to the game sims 2 was the one that got me into the game i didn't get all the dlcs but once sims 3 came out in 2009 i loved it and sims 2 ultimate collection came out before sims 4 it was completed for sims 2 for me they 100 percent took sims 2 off origin because it threatened their sales crow sim crow simmer actually uh apparently said that someone else has the license to the game or something and they're restricting them to put on origin i don't know um pleasant sims tweeted about it a couple days ago just dump the game changers I like the game changers. I do. I, I think that they're, they like Sims 4. Okay, here's what I say about game changers. S game changers like Sims 4. And I like how they still critique Sims 4. But at the same time, like their channel revolves around Sims 4. So they can't just like dump Sims 4. You know what I mean? I think Lil Simsy, I think um, Plumbella, I think they're very genuine people. And I think their love for Sims 4 kind of is is so much to them that they can critique it to their, the best of their ability. But at the end of the day, like they don't have they're not sitting in that boardroom making decisions. You know what I mean? The Game Changers concept was good until they tried to convince us Betsu was good. Then I knew the Game Changers wanted Coim. I think Plumbella was very um, fair with her review of, of Batu. I love this went from not so buried to Sims 4 rant. I know my game like got fucked up. I know we need some more ranty like this more often. I started playing Sims 2 Pets on PS2. I started with Sims 2 and then I got Sims 2 Pets on PlayStation as well. Okay, let's go back into Asmara's video. I'm sorry, I'm like getting off topic. Um, so I'm gonna be referring various interviews, articles, and videos from the research that I've done to break this down for you. I love how she chronicles the entire Sims, Sims, Sims franchise. A Sim. In this astounding Comic Sans menu, The Sims 1 introduced the personality mm. point system, which would later return in The Sims 2 and be replaced by traits in both The Sims 3 and The Sims 4. In The Sims 1, you could assign personality points <clears> to the following characteristic. By the way, here's my personal opinion. I'm glad we don't have this anymore. That's my controversial opinion. I'm glad that this is gone. 
personality point system, which would later return in The Sims 2 and be replaced by traits in both The Sims 3 and The Sims 4. In The Sims 1, you can assign personality points to the following characteristics. Neat, outgoing, active, playful, and nice. The game would automatically give your Sim a astrological sign based on the personality points you assign to each mm. of the characteristics. In this Andrew Arcade video, he sort of explains how the Ugh, Andrew Arcade, my heart. Personality points affect your Sims in game. Depending on how many points put in each category determines what trait that person gets in that category. So for example, if we only put zero through two traits or points, sorry, in the neat category, then they'll become a slob, and that basically means that they rarely clean up after themselves and they never flush the toilet and they're pretty gross sims. And that's basically the bulk of personalities in the Sims 1. <laughs> but something interesting <laughs> is that the Sims 1 had an element of mystery where you technically did make your Sims and create their personality, but there was still a sense of mystery in the game where every time you turned it on, you weren't exactly sure what was gonna So I think okay, I'm so sorry, Asmara, if you're watching this video and I pause your video on like a face that is not flattering um and arcade in his own way created leprosy he did yeah so anyway as mara's point here is that every time you load up sims one the sims personality does not determine what their actions are right like in sims one if your sim is super neat that doesn't mean necessarily that like your house cannot be a fucking pigsty right like that that's that's essentially what that means and i like that the game is not linear like that i like how because just because my sim is neat like does that does that mean that they can't have trash in their house no that doesn't mean but if we look at the sims 4 nowadays i feel like every time i have a neat sim they're constantly cleaning they're constantly doing that autonomous action where they're like spraying the counters and stuff like that i feel like the Sims 4 relies on the three traits that they can have way too much. And the traits, like, aren't even necessarily that great. Like, Sims 4 traits are unarguably awful. <laughs> but I think that the, the limited amount of traits we have in Sims 4, the Sims rely on it way too much in order to gain aspects of their personality. Whereas in Sims 1, if I have a neat Sim, that doesn't automatically, like, that doesn't automatically make them, you know, the most neatest person in the world, despite them having max neat points. Yes, they'll take care of themselves. Yes, they won't be as much of a slob as a slobby Sim will be. Um, but in Sims 4, it's like the neat trait defines that fucking Sim. And it's like, that's not how people are. You know, life isn't black and white like that. Life is like everyone's on a spectrum, right? So, or how your Sims I like react to everything. Oh my god! Oh my god! Did you guys see that? Did you guys see that computer? Hold on, let me go back. What was gonna happen, or how your Sims would react to everything? <laughs> I love it. I love it so much. I love this like bulky brick computer. It's so cute. <laughs> I also want like one of these sort of computers just to display in my room or something. Although my room is like fucking tiny, but. It's like a it's like a piece of history, you know what I mean? Well, you never know what's gonna happen. Um, every time I play it, it's kind of a surprise. The game itself has been a surprise with sales over a hundred million dollars, as much as a hit movie. But with the Sims, you as much as a hit movie. I like how video games back then were such a niche that whoever is commentating over this video, not as Mara, like whoever is commentating over this news clip right now, they're like having to defend video games with as much as a hit movie, like as as though equating the Sims or as though equating a video game to a hit movie makes it not uh weird in like the public eye because i feel like back then in like the 90s when this video was probably made people that played video games were regarded as like nerdy or like dorks and so the, whoever like whatever news station abc whatever news station this is had to equate the sales of a movie to the sims just to make it like not dorky create the plot and characters give them jobs families problems and let them live now it's personality in the sims one pretty basic sims two Fuck yeah! Let's get into this bitch. The Sims do the personality points in a pretty similar way. In this Pleasant Sims clip, uh, you can see- ah! She's gonna quote Pleasant Sims. I forgot she brings up Pleasant Sims. Uh, she explains sort of how the personalities affect your Sims in game and what each of them do. This is my queen right here. Hold on. Due to your Sims. A Sim with really low nice <gasps> points, like three or under. I love Cindy so much. Will be a real jerk and they will start fights with Sims in your neighborhood. Lazy Sims will be lazy. Active Sims will be active. And a Sim that has really high neat points, like seven or higher, will be a neat freak, constantly cleaning, can't stand messes. But if they're somewhere in the middle, they don't really have an associated behavior. Pretty similar to how the Sims 1 personality points worked. The Sims 2 also introduced aspirations. However, in the base game, there were only five family, romance, knowledge, fortune, and popularity. Your Sims' wants and fears would be controlled by this aspiration system. Aspir wants and fears. That was the best thing they've ever added in the Sims history. Wants and fears. That's all I want. Let's, let's, if we kind of think about wants and fears here, wants and fears, I feel like are so good because my cat is crying outside my door. I'm so, I'm sorry if you hear that, but <laughs> I was going to say wants and fears are so good because the wants like kind of 
the wants and fears give your sim like more aspects of their personality than just like the baseline traits the, the point traits here so you can kind of see how they're sloppy shy lazy serious grouchy the wants and fears kind of they they do rely a little bit on your sims um personality points here but that doesn't necessarily mean that your incredibly neat sim can't want to i don't know, like throw a rager house party and have like trash everywhere you know what i mean i can't i keep going back to this example of neat sims so i don't know how else to put it in the word in words so i what i kind of liked about wants and fears is it gives you kind of a closer look into sims like what's what's going on up here it, it's it's not necessarily i feel like when you have these personality points the like sims one's flaw was that the the personality points were sort of what their what the sim is which is very similar to what sims 4 is like traits are what sims are there's there's nothing up here with sims 4 they they feel i feel like sims 4 sims are like kind of dead behind the eyes and sims 2 or sims 1 to a certain extent as well sims 1 sims are kind of dead you know dead up here um but the but the these i like the i like the personality points to a certain extent but i'm glad that they're gone i will say that i'm glad that they're gone we stand pleasant sims on the stream i know once of yours gave me life once of yours are so good i especially liked fears because it kind of shows what your what is on your sims mind and it gives a lot more aspects of storytelling i guess like if a sim is scared to have a baby or it fears having a baby uh maybe it's because they're in a really bad financial state or maybe it's because you know maybe they, they they're just done with children or they're scared that they're their children they're gonna die before their their children um are adults i guess so i think fears fears in general there's like this kind of standard practice when in my screenwriting and playwriting classes where the teacher will ask us you know a series of questions in the beginning of each like if i take screenwriting two they're gonna ask me questions about what we learned in screenwriting one just to kind of like recap you know what i learned in the in the prior semester and so one of the biggest practices, and this is pretty common, even in like creative writing, like if you're writing a book or whatever, a way to show and get in, in a character's mind and to make the character seem human and so that people can empathize with the, with the character is to make them vulnerable, like show them in vulnerable situations. And I feel like that is where Sims 2 really succeeded because not only did we get to see what Sims wanted, but we also got to see what our Sims feared, which gave them and made them, we gave them personalities and it made them feel even more alive than they have ever been because we got to see their vulnerable side. We, we know what they feared. We know what they didn't want to happen in their life. And obviously if it did happen, one of their fears did come true then we got we got kind of uh reprimanded for that like we some, some sims go into aspiration failure or their aspiration goes in the red so sims 2 is kind of hard sims 1 is really hard like i don't know if you guys ever played sims 1 but sims 1 just keeping your sims alive is extremely hard and i played sims 2 once and the first time that i came back to sims like came back to sims 2 i guess the last time i played it was on playstation 2 but the first time i came back to sims 2 my sim died from hunger because i didn't realize how how much actually i needed to take care of my sims because i'm used to sims 3 where it shows me how long a sim can go before they die of hunger so i think it's really interesting actually how difficult sims 1 and sims 2 are to keep your actual sim alive just an interesting thought creations help to further define your sims personality and give them goals to work towards in their life for example family sims would often want to get married and have babies romance sims would want to woohoo and go on dates knowledge sims would want to learn new skills and meet aliens fortune sims would want to get raises and promotions and earn money and popularity sims would want to make new friends and throw parties seeing a romance sim want to woohoo with three different sims and having fear of there's the there's the man myth himself guys don lothario <laughs> rejected for a flirt meant you knew exactly what this sim wanted out of life and you knew how to help them get it so as you can see from that clip your sims personalities aspirations wants and fears really controlled your sims behavior in game secondary aspirations were introduced with the sims 2 free time expansion which allowed you to choose any Ooh, free time is such a dopamine rush like 
God, Sims 2 free time, man. Sims 2 free time is so good. Second, base game aspiration to also control your Sims wants and fears. I hope y'all are still with me. This expansion also introduced the grilled cheese aspiration, which would later become a theme in other future Sim titles. Turn on and turn offs were introduced with the Sims 2 nightlife expansion. So if you want to have some tea to your game, you can have your Sim like be attracted to like elders or like Sims with gray hair. <laughs> have some tea in your game. <laughs> I like that. They have beards. Or you can have your Sim be attracted to like the fit Sims wearing their bathing suit. Maybe they could not be attracted to Sims with a lot of makeup. There's a lot of different combinations that you could create using this chemistry system. And there was a fun extra layer to your Sims personality, especially as it came to the dating scene. Interests were a thing in the Sims 2. Um, your sim would just be randomly assigned interest. These, okay, so this is kind of like a con controversial opinion. I also do not like interests. I don't think interests are, I don't like, when I go into playing Sims 2, I don't necessarily look at their interests. Like that doesn't really do much for me storytelling wise. Like I don't really get ideas from looking at their interests. I don't know, it might be because I'm a Sims 3 player and we kind of don't have these, but if you can kind of see here, there are so many choices right here. There's so many tabs. There's so many little bubbles and little options. I think that this is really, I feel like this is a really big drawback of Sims 2 because everything is just so crowded. It's very overwhelming to a new player of Sims 2 to learn what all of these different things are. And I guess you could argue that, well, you don't have to look at these, so you just don't look at them. But knowing that they're there and then not using them you feel like you're missing out on something it's kind of overwhelming for a brand new person to play sims 2 and i'm kind of glad that these went with the sims 3 i'm glad that they're gone because i feel like traits do a, such a better job at determining a sims interest rather than having these just points randomly assigned at the beginning of every single sims 2 game i don't know why is brandy with my with her or me with her zero interest in work brandy is always such like a lazy i, I love brandy i love brandy broke she's one of my favorite sims and sims too but she is quite lazy <laughs> with her zero interest in work i look at interest in my sims age up into teams but for pre maids i don't really care yeah i don't i don't necessarily just like I could go without them and i'm glad that they went in sims 3 because i feel like traits are such a better way at determining what a sim likes and what their interests are is when a sim was either created or born and your interests basically determine how engaged a sim is in conversation am i the only one who used to get dina and brandy together i have never gotten dina and brandy together i do sometimes get cassandra and mary sue together because both of them have like the same situation like they're in the same boat they're both being um cheated on by their husbands ah there we go. When that interest is brought up, and it also like determines what kind of conversations your sim will autonomously initiate. Your sims can gain new interest by reading magazines, and again, it's just like another fun little thing to add to your sim's personality and characteristics and behaviors in the game. Hobbies were introduced in the Sims 2 free time expansion. When this is really cool. Hobbies are a really cool idea, but once again, I like tying hobbies in with traits like they do in Sims 3. Once again, once again, once again, once again. <laughs> I'm a Sims 3 player. Like, I, I only play Sims 3. I play Sims 2 occasionally, but I prefer Sims 3. So I'm obviously gonna prefer how Sims 3 does things just because I'm most familiar with the game and it's my favorite entry into the Sims franchise. <laughs> which I think of like a more detailed version of the base game interests. Your sim could gain hobby enthusiasm points in any of the following activities. Cuisine, film and literature, tinkering, sports, music and dance, fitness, arts and crafts, science. But I like the idea of like being able to do these things because that opens up the floodgates for allowing me to create myself even more. Like if I'm a ballerina and I want to play Sims 2, then I can represent myself because there is, there's, what is there? There's that ballerina bar in Sims 2. I think there's also some sort of schooling thing that Sims can do, um, children Sims can do. So I like the, I like the methods of, of representation in Sims 2. I really do. I think that the hobbies are a good, a, a good entry. Games in nature. Certain interests and even personality points would correspond to which hobbies your sim would be more likely drawn to. And by doing certain activities that correspond to said hobby, your sim will naturally and gradually gain hobby enthusiasm points in these different activities. So here's an example of activities that get up your arts and crafts hobby enthusiasm points. Gaining interest in hobbies can start as young as toddlers, which I think is really cool. Definitely a very lifelike addition. Sims also have predestined hobbies, which I think is really cool and also kind of adds to the mystery of the Sims. If you remember, I was talking about that with the Sims 1. Predestined hobbies will be outlined in silver. And I guess you can think of this feature as like a natural born skill or like a activity that just comes naturally to your Sims. Yeah. I don't really like the the natural born hobbies. <laughs> okay, now this is not me hating on Sims 2, by the way. I like Sims 2, I have played it. I have like a Pleasant View save going right as we speak. I literally have a spreadsheet of tracking every single Sims progress in Sims 2 Pleasant View. But 
I think that lifetime wishes could easily do the same job and it would eliminate one of these tabs in here. Like I'm saying, this is really overwhelming for a brand new player. When I returned to Sims 2 a couple months ago, and by the way, I came from Sims 2 on PlayStation, so we definitely did not have these in Sims 2 PlayStation. I was really overwhelmed because there's so many fucking buttons on the Sims 2 interface. Like, look at all these tabs, and then you go into this, like, little human head, and there's, like, five more tabs, you know what I mean? So, <sighs> lifetime wishes, for sure, are, I think, a better method of doing these certain, like, predestined hobbies. I always change them, but the concept was good. I get the, the concept is there, but the execution is a little shoddy. <laughs> Creating your sim, but there's still little quirks about them that you didn't necessarily create, but also add to your storytelling in the game. The Sims 2 introduced memories, which had a huge impact on storytelling. Oh, memories. In okay, this is going to be interesting. So first and foremost, memories, amazing. Love the concept of them. I like how I can move a sim in from across fucking Pleasant View and I can have their memories stored with them. So I can kind of see like how their life has played out through that method. Um, but the downside with memories is obviously you only make memories for your active household. So if I'm playing Dina and Nina and Don Lothario, you know, is fucking around with Cassandra and gets her pregnant, then when that baby's born, at least if I'm using the Sims 2 story progression mod, then I'm, I don't think Dawn has a memory because I don't think Sims 2 story progression, I guess that's more of like a story progression problem. Um, but my point still stands, you know, the lack of the story progression, Sims only gain memories when you're actively playing them. That's, that's kind of the, the downfall of memories is the way that if I, even if I move Dawn Lothario in with Dina and Nina, well, Dawn that entire time was doing jack shit. He, he was doing nothing. He has no memories. The only memories Don Lothario will now have is the ones that EA gave him at the start of the game. The downfall with Sims 2 is the lack of, uh, like, op I, not even the lack of open world. Not even the lack of open world is my problem with Sims 2. My problem with Sims 2 is only my lot is aging. Only, only the people, only the Sims on my lot. It, it kind of makes me feel like I'm trapped in a bubble. I don't know if you guys have ever played this, but I've seen a common critique of Sims 2 is that when people play Sims 2, they stay on their home lot. They, a lot of people just play Sims 2 on their home lot, just like it's like a dollhouse, you know? They don't go out to the park or they don't go out to bars or whatever. And when I play Sims 2, I am always at the bars. And I think that's the difference of a Sims 2 player and a Sims 3 player is obviously if I'm playing Sims 3, well, I can run across the street, not hit a loading screen and go right to a bar. But if I'm playing Sims 2, I might actually just stay at my house because when I go on those public lots, I know that those Sims are one, not going to age because they are in like a stagnant uh kind of like a stagnant stasis place where they cannot age and my sim is going to be miles and miles and miles older than them by the time that I end up potentially using them as like a suitor for my sim and oh shit well now I'm playing Cassandra Goth and she's an elder whereas Don Lothario is just like a brand new little baby young adult well I, I feel like that's that's a major major flaw with sims too memories were great but the corruption that came with pre-made memories were god awful i've heard that i don't play sims 2 that much because no one else ages the town feels super stagnant see i um i i definitely agree with you pebble and once that sims 2 story progression mod gets improved and uh expanded upon i think that it will draw me in specific and a lot of other sims 3 players that are used to the whole town aging and and moving out and having children and getting married and it'll bring us back to sims 2 because sims 2 has better gameplay than sims 3 but sims 3 has that you know everyone ages at the same time so that is a big draw of sims 3 i i, I just can't stand in sims 2 how i'm the only one that ages my household my current active household are the only people that are progressing in their lives do you mean to tell me that Don Lothario does not advance in his medical career in 15 years of Sims 2 time? Are you serious? Like, I, I just, I just can't, I just can't do that. I, I like when my whole town ages with me because it makes it feel even more realistic. However, let's get into Asmara talking about memories because I think that these are a really important thing to come back to in the later uh, por portion of when she's going to talk about Sims 3. 
in their world. A lot of people in the community talk about the memory system, how iconic it was in The Sims 2. We're not even playing the game. We're just reading the memories. And I'm really I just learning. I fucking oh. love Kia. I don't know if you guys have ever watched Kia, but she is so funny. Listen to what she says here. In their world. A lot of people in the community talk about the memory system, how iconic it was in The Sims 2. We're not even playing the game. We're just reading the memories. And I'm really just learning a lot. Like a plot is thickening just by reading the memories, bro. And basically how it works <laughs> is that your Sim would acquire positive or negative memories based on different life experiences or interactions or even relationships. The townie Sims that like came with The Sims 2 would already have like a list of memories as soon as you open the game so that you could see the townies' backstories and mm -hmm. how they got to the place they were. The memories were integral to the life simulation experience in The Sims 2 because your Sims' future behaviors would be impacted by their past memories of those behaviors, incidents, interactions, or events. Here's another example from Pleasant Sims who breaks down how cheating works in The Sims 2. If a Sim is cheated on in The Sims 2, they will continue to be angry for days, periodically thinking about the offending This is a really good point that Cindy brings up here. So, he is iconic. She really is. She really is. One of the vision type B. <laughs> um, Cindy brings up a really good point here. So, she's she talks about how cheating works and you've seen it before. If you have, have ever watched Sims 2, uh, gameplay at any point the sims will get that like angry flaming thought bubble above their heads and they'll be mad and these sims will remember that memory for the rest of their life which is so cool because not even sims in sims 3 really remember all that well um especially not in sims 4 sims 4 it's like the cheating happens and then in like a day later like the sim forgets about the cheating right but in sims 2 the sims actually remember and i feel like that's what makes these sims and sims 2 feel so alive is the memory problem or is the memory problem is the memories but i do have problems with the memories like i just said only my active family is making memories and i don't like that i want the whole town i want the town as a whole to be able to make memories it's kind of the downfall Don cheated on Cassandra and Mary Sue saw it and Mary Sue gossiped it to Cassandra and she got mad. Is that in your own gameplay or are you talking about like a pleasant view in, um, you know, in, in general? Because I know that that's like the scripted event for a pleasant view, but it, it is cool how Sims can like gossip about cheating and that sort of thing. Sim who upset them, seething, and you'll see a thought bubble above their head with flames on it, thinking about how angry they are at the person for hurting them. These kind of memories stuck with the Sim and impacted their lives. I also want to mention that the memories weren't all perfect in The Sims 2, although this feature added like so much more depth to the game. Throughout my research, I've learned that deleting memories or Sims or gravestones can really corrupt your game because in The Sims 2, all of the characters. If you have a gravestone on an apartment lot, I have heard rumors that it can really corrupt your game. So if you have a Sim living in an apartment, be careful that they don't die because it can like ruin your entire entire game. Apparently, just that's just. That's just what I've heard. Characters and stories are really connected through the memory system. There have since been resources guiding you through how to delete memories or Sims in The Sims 2, which ones to and to not delete to avoid this type of corruption in your game. But this is something that can affect your gameplay, so I thought I would just mention it. This feature kind of takes away a little bit of your own personal customization in that way, because the town is kind of set up to have its own set stories. Of course, you can you know, download your own custom worlds, make your own Sims, etc. But the town stories kind of stay the same around you. You're kind of stuck to the town stories that the game gives you. I kind of like the I kind of like the scripted events that Sims 2 has. I think that the fact that you jump into Sims 2 and most of the sims have their own stories going they have their own lives going they have their own likes and dislikes and people in town that they're that they hate and that they like i i personally think that is a major draw of sims 2. i think sims 4 is way too loosey-goosey none of the sims in sims 4 have relationships with each other uh, what is, I think I think two and three are equally good. Three has definitely more quality life features and is a much better life simulator with so much more content. But two just has so many interesting characters and is so detailed. The minor details in Sims 2 are definitely what draws me in the most. It was in my game, but a feature that nobody talks about was this somewhat meaningful gossip. I like how... It doesn't give you like a notification exactly of what your sims are talking about but you can kind of gather from you know the thought bubbles over their head what they're you can get like the general gist of what they're saying i think is very interesting all of these features i covered the personality points the aspirations primary and secondary aspirations turn on and turn offs interests and memories all really contributed to the beloved storytelling and lore of the sims 2. i think we hear those words a lot especially as it relates to the sims like storytelling and lore so why are those two things so important to this game first i want to start off by defining lore because i personally didn't know what this meant until i started seeing the term be used more and more so lore derives from the word folklore and it's basically like a set of traditions facts or beliefs that belong to a particular group so as it relates to the sims the lore of the sims would be things like the classic counties that have made an appearance in every generation of the game Don Don Lothario Lothario. And, the and the dreamers the calientes the land grabs also reoccurring easter eggs like the sims obsession with llamas and gnomes and grilled cheese that would also be considered like part of the lore of the sims franchise okay but back to my question why are storytelling and lore so important fyi i think it's so annoying that like part of the sims lore is llamas because it's like okay ea we get it like especially in sims 3 they went so hard with the llama sort of like easter eggs with like llama memorial stadium i think that's the name of the stadium in the base game town of sunset valley um obviously there's like the freezer bunny stuff everywhere like 
they went in so hard also the llama mascot in sims 3 university like like they went so hard with the llama references in sims 3 it's so annoying because it's like okay we get it like you guys llama is like the face of your fucking franchise we get it okay according to this game well according to psychology today i'm tired of llamas we can do better than gnomes <laughs> Okay. Storytelling has a unique ability to build deep, meaningful connections. That's kind of how we as humans are wired to work. When you think about it, we are almost always consuming or telling ourselves stories. And I'm not just talking about in movies or in books. When you catch up with a friend you haven't seen in a while, you're probably going to exchange stories of what y'all have been up to since the last time you've been together. In a school or classroom setting, it's not uncommon for teachers to give examples using a story to help you bring whatever information it is that you're learning into your head. This entire video you're watching has basically been an accumulation of stories. I started off with telling you the history of The Sims and Will Wright. And when you go to sleep, the storytelling doesn't stop there. Your brain continues to try to make sense of the world and your subconscious by telling you stories through your dreams. So storytelling is a huge way that we connect as people and process loads of information. It may sound like I'm going a bit off topic here, but I say all that to say, Will Wright understood that people are fascinated with people. So even if people at Max didn't necessarily see his vision at first, using this premise, he and his team went out to create a game based on just that, giving life to the human experience through a video game in a way that's kooky and unexpected, but still feels very real, fun, and personal. Will Wright has sold 15 million games that have no monsters, no shootouts, not even winners and losers. He's made games out of making life work. Developing town lore was that story- uh, Once again, I love how this newscaster has to say, he hasn't made any money using shootouts. Uh, whatever he said, what, what the fuck did he say? No monsters, no monsters no shootouts, shootouts, not even winners or losers. Like. I like how the perception of games in the 90s was someone has to win or someone has to lose. Like there, there's no, it's like black or white. There's no, once again, no spectrum. So it's, it's interesting to see how video games were perceived in the 90s. I don't know. It's just like kind of an interesting case study. Not even winners and losers. He's made games out of making life work. Developing town lore with set storylines, distinct personalities, and the elaborate memory system not only helped like walk the player through how to play the game, but it also got the player to build a relationship with these townies and like a lot of simmers truly fall in love with them. Yo, I'm I'm super in love with Darren Dreamer, I swear to God. The most drama filled, saddest, train wreck, hot mess world that you will ever experience in your Sims 2 life. <laughs> Fall in love with them. <laughs> Listen to what this person says. It's the most drama filled, saddest, train wreck, hot mess world that you will ever experience in your Sims 2 life. <laughs> we loved and cared about these Sims and wanted to tell their stories through our gameplay. The lore was a lot of the reason a lot of players got hooked on. Train wreck. <laughs> what did she say? She said train wreck, train wreck experience that you will ever experience in your Sims 2 life. I love that so much. Hold on, I gotta let my cat out of my room really quick. Be like five seconds. Hold on. <laughs> Hello, hello. I'm back. Anyway, this person, whoever this is, Spring Sims, makes a very good point. Uh, pleasant views of fucking train wreck. <laughs> the gaming chair reveal, I know. I'm like sweating so bad right now because my lights are so fucking bright like oh all right let's continue you ever experience in your sims 2 a life we loved and cared about these sims and wanted to tell their stories through our gameplay the lore was a lot of the reason a lot of players got hooked on this game franchise in this 2004 interview with GameSpy, will wright states that ever since we started testing the first version of the sims we noticed that people couldn't play without attaching a story to what they were seeing this seems to be a natural way in which humans understand remember and communicate experiences over time we've come to recognize that storytelling is integral to the entire sims idea and we're always looking for ways to let players create drive and share these stories okay so so far we've discussed how life simulation was done in both the sims 1 and the sims 2 as well as why storytelling is kind of the whole point of this game but apart from the human mind's natural attraction to storytelling there has to be more why were these early sims games so popular Especially Especially the Sims 2. Was it just the wow factor of never having experienced a game quite like the Sims before? Or was there something truly special about the formula that Will Wright created? Will Wright was the blueprint. <laughs> On Twitter, Ari says that The Sims 2 had the most depth. There were little animation details that made the game come alive. Sims 4, wait, what does it say? Sims 2 Forever had the most depth. Little animation details that made game alive. Was campy and fun, not watered down. Had consequences. Had the best lore. Had drama. Chemistry system. Sims 3 has a chemistry system. The best memory system. Mm. Okay, I'll give Sims 2 the best memory system. I'll give them that. I'll give them that. Teenagers actually look like teenagers. Okay, Sims 3 teenagers look like teenagers. They also have a height difference and get pimples. Hmm. <laughs> Let's, okay. Had the most depth. Pretty objective. Little animation details. I'll give Sims 2 little animation details. That made the game feel alive was campy and fun and not watered down. Honestly, Sims 2 is campy. It is so like out there and, and wild in terms of, I don't know, just, just the, the weird stuff like the social bunny. Do you guys know what the social bunny is from the Sims 2? It is insane how that is even a part, like that. that's the epitome of campiness is the fact that the social bunny just shows up when your Sim gets lonely. It's kind of super funny and I really like the social bunny in Sims 2. That's something I want to talk about right now is the social bunny is more than just some someone that shows up when your Sim is like alone, you know? When I dropped down from the sky, I screamed. 
when it dropped on for the oh from in sims 2 yeah it's it's like it's it's actually scary for a second but i feel like this has kind of been analyzed at length before um but a lot of people talk about how the social bunny in the sims 2 is representative of like depression and loneliness and i think that is such an important thing to talk about because i feel like that aspect of sims 4 is really missing like this is a game made in 2021 sims 4 can we just talk about that sims 4 is a game made in 2021 and they don't talk about depression they don't talk about sadness i think that depressed was supposed to be one of the moods for sadness in the sims 4 and i think they took it out i think they took the de depressed out and it just goes to show that the sims 4 tries to be so pc and like and and child friendly and it misses out on that charm that the original games had before it because it doesn't it doesn't come in contact with like it doesn't connect to like real raw human emotion the fact that the sims 2 had you know aspects of depression and the social bunny is very representative of that loneliness and depression is is what the social bunny comes from uh it's just it's just really important that uh, games touch upon that especially life simulation games because depression is so common and so rampant and it happens to almost everyone and and the fact that a game can call it call itself done or completed or finished or someone can feel you know satisfied with the sims 4 when it is missing these core aspects of human emotion is insane to me mods are keeping the sims 4 alive for real there's a reason wicked whims is the most popular mod at least sims 4 said trans rights we had to stand yes i i like the inclusivity for sims 4 i think the inclusivity is one of the biggest or best updates they have done for sims 4 um but there's you know just because just because we get something that is so important to like the human experience um i guess it doesn't mean that it's like a perfect game right but yeah i understand what you're saying like uh, trans the trans part of the creative sim is is really important and just like the skin color update or skin skin color the skin color slider i mean sims 4 is a whole vampires pack where they suck your sims blood in the night but burglars are too scary for the game they need to stop making the game so childlike I wonder why they added firefighters but didn't feel the need to add burglars it just it does feel like kind of like a kind of like a politically correct uh sort of like advertising to children sort of move you know what i mean anyway let's continue on it was campy and fun and not watered down it had consequences the best lore drama the chemistry system the best memory system and she even makes the point that teenagers were more realistic and she gave the examples that they actually got pimples in the sims too modom i'm sorry girl but she says on twitter the sims 2 sims were truly unique oh my god this person follows me on twitter oh my god okay sorry i just like saw that that, that like caught me out i was like oh my god i've seen i've seen her in my notifications before the sims 2 the sims were truly unique the, in the game really felt like a life simulation with the just the amount of crazy sims the sims 2 is fucking wild like that game I, every time i load up the sims 2 something fucking wild happens game really i guess that's why people like it so much right felt like a life simulation with just the right amount of crazy i saw so many other tweets about like the sims 2 also being the most detailed games and with those examples that i gave before you can see how those little details and those little things that they added to the life simulation experience and into your sims personality really made the sims 2 come alive and be sort of the iconic game that it is for my analysis the primary goals of these early sims games was really to create a true life simulation experience where you had some control but mm -hmm. you didn't have all the control you weren't sure what was going to happen every time you opened up your game that was right. the goal of these early sims games and that's kind of just what will write set out to do from the beginning in the same 2004 interview with games by weeks before the sims 2 was released will Wright states that i think the combination of an approachable subject everyday life as well as a well-tested game interface were prerequisites to success on top of that the open-ended narrative rich gameplay and huge fan involvement such as fan sites custom content the sims exchange etc really put it over the top players have not gotten their hands on the sims 2 yet but this is just what will Wright had said about why he thought the sims 1 was such a success the sims 1 and 2 also attracted a whole new demographic of players whose society otherwise wouldn't have thought would be interested in gaming the sims became a favorite i think that's really interesting too the, the point asmara brings up here is that I, I said this you know 20 minutes ago when i was talking about how news uh broadcasts were framing the sims franchise they were like there's no shooting or monsters or guns in the sims 2 and blah blah blah, blah. like it, it's interesting how they frame the average gamer as someone as like a dork and a nerd and that sort of thing and the sims was really integral in bringing in a, a totally different demographic i saw someone on reddit once uh someone asked why is the sims franchise so popular and it was kind of like they were being really condescending and, and it wasn't it clearly wasn't 
uh, a question with good intentions and someone else like an actual semi replied that it's basically like barbies but for grown-ups if that makes any sense and i think that's really interesting because um the biggest demographic for barbies at least when i was growing up was little girls and obviously now you know we're kind of we're kind of breaking those barriers and we're allowing finally allowing boys to play with barbies and um though they're like my whole family would look down if i if i had a son and bought my son a barbie which I don't give up like why why does why is a barbie have to be for a boy why can't a barbie be for boys and girls what what is fundamentally wrong with giving my son a barbie if i had a son um but i feel like my fan my whole family would look down upon me just because if i gave one of my children that was a boy a barbie you know that's that's the thing so anyway so basically what i'm trying to say here the point i'm trying to make is the fact that they brought in a whole new market for for gaming and i feel like that really did set a really nice precedent because i don't know if i hadn't played the sims i don't know if i'd be as into gaming as i as i am or if i would have ever bought a computer in the first place and obviously getting a computer in the first place kind of spiraled my love for video games in general like i don't just play um the the sims i play a bunch of other uh other games and stuff like that yeah i missed my furniture getting taken oh that must have been for the burglar sorry i missed your i missed your comment mr client I, I apologize i love how ea bragged that 30 million people have sims 4 on origin as if the game wasn't forcibly put in anyone's library who played the cast or played it free on a free weekend it was and when it was free to download for months gender norms are trash i agree with you bride barbies and i'm a boy child <laughs> A lot of women and children who at the time were not often included in any conversations in the gaming industry in my opinion the sims introduced a whole new genre of gaming which brought about a whole new community of gamers players could also use the sims in a variety of different ways i kind of break it down into two categories building and storytelling but even within storytelling there were so many different ways you could tell your stories in the sims too will Wright emphasized that exploring the failure states recreating your own thing i don't know if you guys ever watched machinimas when you were a kid but i think the point that uh asmara brings up where people love to use the sims as like a storytelling thing i think that's really interesting because machinima is literally a, a machinima if you've never seen one before if you haven't heard of what a machinima is it's basically when you use the sims or you can use like imvu or wizard 101 or anything like that um, but you tell a story through those characters in the machinima i guess and I've seen them mostly for Sims games, especially Sims 2. People used to love to make machinimas for Sims 2. But I think that uh, it's, it really goes to show that storytelling at, is, a, is, is the core of the Sims, is the Sims franchise, because um, machinimas are primarily made using the Sims games. And machinimas are incredibly reliant on, on, uh, on storytelling and it's just sad to say that the sims 4 is lacking so much on storytelling when 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 the sims was made at one point to be a storytelling game family and pursuing the in-game goals were all different ways that we saw people play the game i've heard some people argue that although the sims 2 is foundational to kind of how we understand what the sims is today it's still limited in some ways you'll get to see how much more customization players got with future i used to make machinimas <laughs> i used to watch them a lot when i was a kid of this game compared to the sims 2 and although there were ways that you could personalize your sims 2 experience this game is kind of set up to guide you through how to play the townie houses for example are kind of like tutorials to show you the vast array of things that you can do in the sims so the sims 2 is more structured in that way there are more things that are beyond your control or more things that were set up kind of before you got there if that makes sense and some people like this approach and some people don't having a certain understanding will help us better understand why people are arguing over more recent sims games and what people actually want to see but i think it's safe to say that the storytelling the lore the flexibility of the game and the wide demographic of players <clears> really <throat> set maxis up with a strong fan base for the next generation of the sims will Wright left maxis in 2009 however i'm not sure ex exactly when he stopped developing i'm so god i'm so goddamn late it's okay we're just we're just watching a video by um asmara on youtube she's she's chronicling the progression of the sims um industry and why the game is how it is today does anyone remember i ate my baby sims too what <laughs> what the fuck is that i ate my baby sims too what the fuck i have the memories <laughs> um i'll have to watch that after this what the fuck i ate my baby sims too i watched that whole ass free documentary <laughs> she does a really good job yeah she she did a really good job at chronicling everything um it has millions of views are you fucking kidding me she barbecued the baby what <laughs> i had the grill mod for sims too yes yes i'm gonna do the fetus barbecue <laughs> oh my god that's so fucking funny okay so i was gonna say that this is a really interesting point that asmara brings up here so i'm sorry my headphones are like squeezing my head i'm gonna like i don't want to keep them on my neck because it just looks stupid but my like i feel like my brain like blood leaving my head because my headphones are so um tight on my head but 
anyway, Asmara brings up a really good point here. So Will Wright left The Sims franchise as a whole to go and create his other uh game. He like started he started working on a separate game and he left in 2009. So a lot of people say like talk about how oh my god will wright was the brain of of sims 2 well it's actually gone on record and been shown that will wright literally by the time the sims 2 was released will wright had nothing to do with the sims 2 let alone the sims 3 so i mean i don't mean to downplay or discredit will wright because he was like the idea for sims is 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 from him but a lot of people are like, oh my god, The Sims The Sims 2 has the most personality personality in it because Will Wright worked on it. But like I just said, Will Wright was done with Sims, with the Sims franchise by Sims 2. So it, it, it goes to show that it doesn't take Will Wright to come back to the Sims community to make a good Sims game. Like it, it just takes it just takes people that want to make a good Sims game to make a good Sims game. It, it, we don't need Will Wright back. Um, not that I have like a vendetta against him or anything. It sounds like I kind of have like a vendetta, but I just think it's kind of uh, interesting how people hype Will right up so much. And then little like little do people know he actually didn't even have that much of a hand in Sims 2, but he did have he did come up with the idea for Sims. So I guess I can kind of I can kind of see why people hype him up so much in the community. OK, I'm going to put my headphones back on. Hope they don't squeeze my head again. <laughs> like I literally felt blood like leaving my head for the sims but i do know that he was not involved in the development process for the sims 3 which was released that same yeah year. so okay so as mara says that he was not involved in the development process for sims 3 he was also not in the development process for sims 2 the sims 3 is what i like to call it but but a lot of people say that the sims 3 was the downfall of the franchise which hurts the fuck out of me one because i'm a giant sims 3 fanboy and two i feel like the sims 3 is strong as fuck like I feel like it's one of the strongest games in the end in the franchise if not the strongest game in the sims franchise and guys this is my moment this is my moment to shine and give you guys all my sims 3 all my sims 3 knowledge so I wasn't commentating much about the sims 1 especially because I don't know much about sims 1 I wasn't even alive when that game was um made <laughs> and sims 2 I didn't grow up with sims 2 so I really cannot uh elaborate that much on it but sims 3 i have lots of knowledge of so i'm gonna try and commentate um over most of what asmara is saying over here over in this section of the video i mean to say so beginning of i'm excited for the sims franchise it introduced a whole new generation of players like myself who got hooked on the game but as to be expected the sims 3 took away and added on a lot of features from the sims 2 which again depending on your play style and your preferences oh i forgot to mention this in the sims oh god i'm so sorry asmara like if she's watching this video and i'm pausing it on a face oh my god i'm, I'm gonna feel so bad on popular opinion sims 3 expansions were the were the peak of the franchise i think so too um but if i were to voice that opinion on twitter i feel like i would get dragged <laughs> it is not the downfall i love sims 3 i i agree with you i agree with you mystical i agree with that um, but I was going to say that the biggest leap The Sims has taken ever, 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 ever is the leap from Sims 1 to Sims 2. Because you went from viewing the game in four directions. You can only turn the camera in four directions in Sims 1 to having a 360 angle camera. Not only that, but you could finally customize your hair color from your skin tone to your clothing sims 2 was the biggest leap in the entire series and i do not discount that but i'm just saying that a lot of people rag on the sims 3 calling it a lag simulator which hurts me because i'm a sims 3 fanboy as i've already mentioned and also <laughs> they say it's the downfall which hurts it just hurts man it really does hurt and I just think that there needs to be more credit where credit is due because The Sims 3 had a lot of innovative ideas, like a slider for skin tone. Are you kidding me? A slider for skin tone in 2009? Mind blowing, right? Mind blowing. Katy Perry's Sweet Treats and movie stuff was The Sims 3 weaklings. I definitely do not like movie stuff. That was tragic. <laughs> the strengths in Sims 3 are different than the strengths in Sims 2, and it isn't fair to say that one is worse than the other. I love both games. The Sims 3 matches my playstyle. Sims 4 was a flop, though. I agree with Sims 4 was a flop. And yeah, I would say Sims 3 matches my playstyle as well. I love open worlds. I love how a town advances when my sim advances. Sims 3 superior, period. I agree with you. Be a good thing or a bad thing. The Sims 3 versus The Sims 4 seems to be a hot topic. A lot of people like to argue about over on Twitter. And this debate has honestly been going on for a long time. If you how ever, is like this a debate? How is Sims 3 versus Sims 4 
a debate can i ask how that's a debate like what is what is controversial there the sims 4 took seven seven years to get what we had in day in day one in sims 3 a skin tone cider why is there a debate there what is there to debate like inclusivity was the was the was a foundation of sims 3 the fact that there was a color wheel that i can customize my clothing and make it whatever i want i can make myself have fucking purple pink blue yellow eyes and in like sims 4 i have to stick to eight or however many swatches there is for eye color like really why is there a debate like what is what is what is there a debate here how is this a debate on twitter i don't know I understand why people say the sims 3 was a downfall of the franchise because it was the start of the sims 3 and bullshit microtransactions overpriced advertisement packs and the team just ignoring the community and packs being broken like island paradise but what i but i what i want to i want to rebuttal that because how many packs for sims 4 have been released mind you this is the biggest sims team the the sims franchise has ever 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 had and it seems like every single fucking expansion pack that comes out in sims 4 something's broken this is the biggest sims team are they not play testing their games like what are they doing in their office for eight hours a day five days a week what are they doing i would i would they fucking stuck at the water water cooler are they just chatting what is going on in the sims 4 offices i don't know how this game can be like this so fucking behind seven years into the game we were done with sims 2 and sims 3 seven years into the game we were in sims 3 territory seven years into the sims 2 Ooh. Sims 3 had a smaller team than Sims 4. But I oh I'm only defending Sims 3 because I'm a Sims 3 fa fanboy, okay? <laughs> Sims 3 also had toddlers in base game. Exactly. But I don't think there anyone agrees or disagrees that the actual game and expansions were great. Does anybody remember a Sim Guru saying Sims 4 was better than Sims 3? Yes, that is Sim Guru Grant. Twitch Witch. That is who that was. The Sims 3 will always be a superior. Oh, by the way, after he said that, he uh deleted his twitter from his app from his i mean twitter app from his phone because people were giving him so much shit the sims 3 will always be superior nothing will change my mind i agree i agree i totally agree with that anyways basically what i'm trying to say here is every single sims 4 expansion pack is released with countless 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 of uh, countless bugs the sims 4 team is the biggest team in in the entire fucking history of the sims franchise and every single expansion pack they release is fucking broken fucking it's it's always broken it's always broken so i don't think it's fair to say that island paradise is broken yes island paradise is incredibly laggy i know um but like i like i say with the color wheel like i say with the skin tone slider the sims 3 was way too ambitious for its time for the time period that that game was developed I feel like it was it, it wanted to do too many things for for 2009 uh hardware is what i'm trying to say so let's continue on not that long ago if you said you didn't like the sims 4 people would like attack you <laughs> and now it seems like the roles have switched some of y'all don't know about that but that was not too long ago do not forget <laughs> people were being dragged for not playing the sims 4 but are people just hung up on the nostalgia <laughs> people were being dragged for not playing the sims 4 i love that <laughs> i love that so much the sims 3 truly the superior gem that many consider it to be so what was the evolution from the sims 2 to the sims 3 guys here we go all right i'm ready i'm fucking ready let me straighten my back up because i got a lot to say about this about this section of the video ladies and gentlemen i just got off work and joined to hear you ranting about sims 4 <laughs> yes yeah, so if you guys are uh just joining in now this is a video by asmara she's a wonderful um youtuber she talks a lot about sims she talks a lot about um black women in like games and in uh the gaming industry and that sort of thing definitely recommend go going to go follow her on youtube but she did a fantastic video chronicling from the sims 1 to the sims 4 and what went wrong with the sims 4 is basically her her entire thesis of this video and what she kind of dives deep into and it's a really great it's a really great video so please go subscribe to her i'm asking you all from me to you please go subscribe to her i love how you scream <laughs> oh there she is i know there she is my my beautiful little baby Mwah, i love you sims 3 <laughs> the Sims 3 kept a bit of the Sims 2 lore by bringing back some familiar faces and creating some new townies. But more than anything, the Sims 3 placed a heavy emphasis on user customization and the player's ability to. Oh, guys, can we can we just talk about this right here? User customization. Oh, and players' ability to create their own stories. Oh, 
will create their own stories within their own world. The Sims 3 took a whole new approach to personalities by introducing traits. A total of traits. Oh, baby, traits. Oh, guys, 99 traits. 99 traits, okay? Let me say that again. 99 fucking traits. 99 traits were in The Sims 3, guys. 99 traits. When, when The Sims 3 was all said and done, there were 99 traits. Sims 3 took... 2010, 2011, 2012, 2014. Four, uh, how many years is this right here? One, two, three, four. <laughs> how, how many? 99 fucking traits. <laughs> Sims 3 storytelling abilities. And five options for traits. Exactly. Five slots, guys. Five whole slots for traits. Oh, baby. Sorry. I know that most of us in here are Sims 3 players. So, uh... Yeah, we're gonna, this entire section, we are not, I, okay, I'm gonna try to be as, um, I guess, as fair as possible, as fair as I can be to The Sims 3, okay? Like, I will acknowledge its flaws where the flaws are due, but for the most part, this is just gonna be me and my Twitch chat just, just getting really excited over Sims 3. <laughs> Seven traits with degrees and max social groups, exactly. <laughs> Sims 3 is talented, brilliant, incredible, amazing, show-stopping, spectacular, never the same. <laughs> totally unique, completely not, never done before. <laughs> yes, Sims 3 is fucking superior. Maddie's scream is adorable. I'm glad. I love how you scream. <laughs> All right, guys. So let's just, let's just acknowledge this now. 99 traits. Oh, that is such a wonderful number. 99, okay. Among four years of Sims gaming experience, 99 traits. Just kiss, chef's kiss. Four traits came with the Sims 3 base game. 35 were added over the course of expansion packs, giving us a total of 99 traits in the Sims 3 game with all of the packs installed. Certain traits also serve as conversation topics, and there are a ton of new, like, unique interactions that Sims with those traits can only- Live, laugh, love, have five traits. <laughs> For example, with the bookworm trait, Sims can talk about books. They can praise a good book they read recently. They can praise a good book, guys. I don't think those problems were nearly as bad as in Sims 3 as Sims 4, but I understand why people will see it as the downfall. What I mean by Island Paradise is broken is that the game is still lagging and crashes no matter what build you play it on, and there were no compatibility fixes for Sims 3 over the slice spam. Or after considering they still charge an outrageous amount for its expansion, the store content I still adore. Island Paradise is probably my favorite expansion back. Sims 4 can never. <laughs> I like how like there's different definitely a different contrast in those two messages there. Um okay. So I think that uh let me let me think of how I'm gonna word this here. Island Paradise is broken. Okay. I will acknowledge Island Island Paradise is broken. I think I think into the future is also very broken as well. Um but what I'm saying is with Island Paradise, okay, yes, they released something that is half, half baked. Okay, they they definitely released something that's half baked, but I have used Ella Charms fixed Island Paradise world so, Sunlit Tides. So, wait, Sunlit Tides? No, Isla Paradise. Sorry, I was reading what Twitch Witch said and like fucked me up there for a second. Um, <laughs> but I have used the fixed uh, so not Sunlit Tides for fuck's sake, Isla Paradise. So, and. I have found that the lag has actually uh, been been less when I used a fixed save. That isn't to say though that they didn't release a half baked product because they did. Okay, they they they, they did they did release release a half baked product, but that isn't like a core problem. Do you know what I mean? Like Sims Four has core problems because of the way it was made that are unfixable. The problems with Sims Four are unfixable. A modder cannot fix Sims Four. There's there's no way that a modder can can change the fun fundamental problems that Sims Four has. Whereas with Sims Three, I feel like the problem Sims Three has, i.e., the lag, the awful color wheel lag, the awful uh, when you go to load clothes and cast, those problems are fixable, right? Though those are those are things that players and, and modders can can fix whereas with sims 4 the problems are at the heart of the game and you cannot fix sims 4 without putting the game on a different game engine if that makes any sense like i acknowledge what the fuck how do you fix loading close and cast um i just don't have that many close and cast <laughs> i think also if you merge your stuff it might run a little bit better but I am I'm hesitant to merge my uh, Sims 3 pack files into 
I, I talked about this before. I'm ha really hesitant to merge my um, Sims 3 pack files into package files. Let me tell you why. It's because Sims 3 pack files were made to run with the Sims 3. S pack files were utilized in the Sims 1, in the Sims 2, in the Sims 4, and in the Sims 3. So if you think about it, Sims 3 pack files are made to run better with Sims 3, if that makes any sense. Like, the game engine that Sims 3 runs on in Sims 3 pack files, those Sims 3 pack files were made to made to be optimized with the Sims 3 game. Um, so they completely overhauled the sort of like CC downloading experience with Sims 3 by utilizing Sims 3 pack files. I hope that I hope I'm explaining that right and that makes a lot of sense. Uh, who even remembers how many trait selections they gave with base game? There were very few, but the difference is that they gave that there that there were so many with base game in Sims 3 and added more as packs came out. But in Sims 4, they gave very few traits in base game, and even still very few with more packs too. Plus, they're all expensive. That is why I don't even play Sims 4 anymore. I agree with you. I also think we need to show uh like the we need to show the higher ups at EA that money talks, right? Like boycotting Sims 4 is the most efficient thing you can do at this current moment of time to get the game to be better. And of course, like people aren't going to boycott it. And I mentioned this at the beginning of, of Asmara's video here. I'm so sorry, Asmara. Like, look at her face. I'm so, I'm just so sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, But I mentioned this at the beginning of this sort of Asmara, the whole... Uh, Asmara's whole video is that there's no other place to go to play a simulation game. EA owns a monopoly on simulation games. So it's not easy to say boycott Sims 4 and go play this sim insert simulation game here because Par uh, Paralyze is not out yet. So there's there, there's no EA owns the monopoly is what I'm trying to say. I, I, I can't in good conscience tell my audience to boycott the game. I can only encourage you guys to boycott the game because I know how hard it is. When you love a game as much as we love the Sims franchise, it is so hard to not get your Sims fix, you know, every um, week or however often you play the Sims the Sims games. I, I Until Paralives comes out, I cannot tell you to boycott a game. I can only encourage you to do so because I know that if Sims 3 did not exist, I would probably be playing Sims 4 and I, it would be really hard for me to, to walk away from playing a game that I play as often as I play um, The Sims 3. So, compact cast mode and NROS master controller is amazing for making cast less laggy. That's true. I literally cannot play Sims 4 without mods. I'm not even being petty. I need simulation fixes to help my Sims reason. Yes, that's, uh, Cindy talked about that. Pleasant Sims, she talked a lot about how Sims 4 is like unplayable because that simulation lag. Cracked Sims 4 only. <laughs> Make their pockets hurt. I play it Sims 4 and never expanded for it. I don't understand how people can even afford it, let alone justify purchasing. I do as well. Milo, Milo, sorry if I'm saying your name wrong. Off topic, but I got a question. What mod do you use that can tell you long your Sims will be pregnant? It's a, that's a feature of awesome mod. Um, I would probably play Sims 2. I would probably play Sims 4 because it, Sims 4 runs like a beauty. Sims 4 runs really nicely, actually. My Sims can't even use the toilet because, yeah, because of the simulation lag, I know. Sims 2 with story progression is so much better. I I have not played around with uh, the Sims 2 story progression mod as of yet, but perhaps that'll be like a future stream. My Sims can't even use the toilet because they freeze. Yeah, you, ha you have to use the simulation lag fix. Otherwise, the game just like they just stand there for hours okay so i'm gonna continue as mara's video here get her off this face that she's making i'm so sorry <laughs> i tried the mod in the sims 2 is actually playable for me now i think sims 2 has always been playable for me i just like to play legacy style instead of rotationally like i don't i don't like to play i don't like to jump households like you have to when you play rotationally you know what i mean like i don't like to go from don lothario to the burb household to the oldie household to the goth house. like i don't like to play like that i, I want to play my own made sim because you know why it's because we're sims 3 players that we play like that sims 3 encourages legacy style play whereas sims 2 encourages rotational play so that everyone ages at the same uh time as everyone else you know what i mean so please don't take those messages the wrong way the sims 3 is my favorite game i just understand why people say it's a downfall and i don't think that means or people yeah i know i know i didn't take them i know i know i didn't take them the wrong way um i just 
am like I said it before, I'm a I'm a I'm a Sims 3 fanboy and I will defend the Sims 3 through and through. Like people that like any someone could say, oh my god, the Sims 3 is so bland, and I would sit here making an hour-long response video on why I think the Sims 3 isn't bland. You know what I mean? So anybody can say anything about Sims 3, and I would be butthurt over it. <laughs> It's hard. It's hard to take uh, criticism for something you love so deeply. You know what I mean? If that makes any sense. So I understand. I know. I know you're not being malicious, and you're free. You're free to voice your opinions here, and I will. Um, I'll read it and like respond to it and stuff like that. So that's what I'm saying about the sim difference in Sims 2 and Sims 3 playstyles. I like. I like. I love the Sims 3, and I'm a legacy player, but I play the Sims 2 when I'm burnt out of Sims 3 because it's also amazing. Sims 3 ha literally has the most content we've ever received. That's true and mind you guys we did not have that big of a team for sims 3 there's a bigger team working on sims 4 right now so why is the fucking game so far behind okay let's continue on with asmara's video they can join a book club bookworms can read faster than other sims they have more fun reading than other sims your sims can write higher quality novels teenagers and children can finish their homework faster and isn't this interesting how much traits can bleed into other gameplay i when i was watching this video before i wanted to make this point um as well bookworms can read faster they have more fun reading than other sims sims can write higher quality novels than other sims teen and child sims can like one trait guys one trait one trait the bookworm trait funnels into all these different aspects of life this is why i love i fucking love trait system in sims 3 i love it so much i like it more than the uh personality points i like it more than um how sims 4 does it where they give you three different like three different traits like I love the Sims 3 trait system because one trait, the bookworm trait, changes all these different aspects of a Sims life. Isn't that crazy how many interactions this opens up for one Sim when they have one trait? It's crazy. Sims 3 literally has the most content we've ever received. Sims 3 is amazing. The way it was released and monetized was not. I will always remember Sim Guru Lindsay talking about the lack of story progression in Sims 4 and she basically said Sims 3 Sims do too much and I can't control my Sims story anymore because townies do their own thing whereas Sims 4 you get to control them like ma'am I would have played I would have played Sims 2 <laughs> so that's very true um yeah Sim Guru Lindsay she's I'll, I'll talk about her later in this video because she comes up she she appears in Asmara's video we're in the last like home stretch of um Asmara's video here so I chose a BS response. I know. To especially to give like your own opinion for why a game doesn't have something, like to for your own opinion to funnel into why you uh didn't include something for a game is so silly to me. Like it's not it's not your say. It's the people that put the money in your pocket. It's the people that put you in that position to give their opinion. It's not it's not a place for you to to give your opinion you simply write the code of the game but we we put the money in your pocket so you can write the code of that game it's interesting you know um that's such a bs response i swear sim gurus are smoking something exactly sim guru Lindsay tried to justify batsu so she knows what she's doing <laughs> i love the hard eye emoji <laughs> it's so petty i love it with the bookworm trait are tend to be attracted to the library and the bookstore and bookworms prefer watching the history channel. isn't this cool too this is just a side note but i never knew this before as mara put this in her video npcs with this trait are attracted to the falling law assignments library and bookstore did you guys know that i did not know that is okay but does npcs mean like the maid the burglar the blah 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 blah, blah or does it mean townies as well wait isn't she the general manager person yes she is she yes now for sims 4 she is but she was not she wasn't always the general manager which i'm gonna talk about um when it comes up in this video channel on tv traits really affected your sims like experience in the game not only by giving them you know more conversation topics and things they like to do but also by having an impact on their desires and wants and that's only using one trait as an example so i scrolled back all the way i think npcs mean townies i think i think so too but i wasn't exactly sure through the sims youtube channel and i found the first few trailers for the sims 3 and you can see when when i when i think npcs i think like um I think maid, burglar, party dancer, mascot. I don't think like, you know, uh, Darren Dreamer, uh, Pansy Prudence, whatever the fuck her name is, living in Lucky Palms. You know what I mean? Like I, I, when, when I hear NPCs, I think that's what an NPC is, is like the burglar, the maid, et cetera, et cetera, not townies. But I, that might just be a typo on wherever she got her information from. 
I literally can't stand her. I don't know why SimGurus try so hard to defend any shitty decisions. Like we know horrible anti-consumer practices aren't your fault. Yeah. I think that's a big point to make too. When I um recently recently I'm pretty sure the NPCs are like people like the maid and burglar suit. So yes, I'm I think they're the same, but I think the article that she referred to is also mentioning uh townies like they should have written townies there but i might just be like a typo or someone that doesn't know too much about the game wrote that article that as mara's referencing um but i was gonna say as of recently i've really been trying to stray away from uh blaming developers and sometimes i'll slip up and i'll say oh my fucking god the sims were developers blah blah blah, blah, blah. like i'll insert my criticism here but i really am trying to uh not say that anymore because let's let's put it like this all right you are close your eyes everybody let's imagine together you are a game developer working at the one the only electronic arts you know you worked really hard to get at this point in your career electronic arts does not just hire anybody off the street i mean it may seem like they do with the progress that the sims 4 has it may seem like they fucking hire people who are who have no experience in the game industry but the people that are working on the sims 4 right now they do have experience in the gaming industry my brother has a game development degree and he has he had tried to apply to uh blizzard he tried to apply to electronic arts he really my brother is 30 years old and he has a well-paying job and he still cannot break into the game industry it is extremely hard to become a game developer on a triple a studio sort of game you know what i mean so <laughs> sim guru lindsay uh was trying to explain that too and said wanted my sims to be able to go on adventure and and source up our every or sauce up our everyday gameplay ma i can't even pick up my baby my sims can stay at home <laughs> that had me fuming yes my dream come true developers say stuff like that for getting the release the pack to go on their ventures let my sims drive to work guru is not developers hire someone off the street yeah okay so back to what i was saying before uh my brother is 30 years old has a well-paying job and still he cannot break into the game development industry so it is so hard for me to believe that the people working at electronic arts on the sims 4 development team are um in, uh inept is the word inept to work on the sims 4 they seem like they are intelligent people and so that's why I like, okay, so once again, close your eyes. Let's go back into this magic. You are a Sims game developer. You are working on The Sims 4. You are Sim Guru. insert your username here. Are you really telling me that eight hours a day, five days a week, you want to put out a shitty product? I don't believe that. To sit at a desk writing code for The Sims 4 for eight hours a day, five days a week, maybe give or give or take a couple you know hours i don't know how, I don't know how much they work at uh ea offices i mean it would seem like they fucking work two hours a week but obviously that's not true so basically my bottom line here is the developers do not want to put out a shitty product what do gurus even do they promote the game or just propose concepts like i generally don't know some of them uh some of them are like the face of the game some of them write code some of them like they have all different they have all different jobs i think you're given a choice when you join the sims 4 development team and they ask you do you want a sim guru account and you you are you check yes or no and then they give you a sim guru account you know what i mean hiring someone off the street would probably be better for the game anyway <laughs> it hurts me so much that the sims 4 is a best-selling game in the series and so many people think that it's the best i agree with you but uh i was gonna say that anyway so i'm personally led to believe because who the fuck wants to sit at a desk working for eight hours a day writing code and put out a bad product not many game developers want to do that and so my brother brought this to my attention he was like maddie it's not the it's not the game developers it's not the sim gurus that want to make a bad game it's more than likely their management above them that is has the has the bottom line and has the say right so what i'm trying to say here is i really am trying to stray away from um blaming sim gurus slash sim developers i really am trying to stray away from that because i think that it is it is a wrong conclusion to draw 
that someone wants to sit at a, sit at a desk for eight hours writing code for a game that they know when the next expansion pack gets released that they're going to get shit on for Twitter. I don't think that they want to do that. I think that it's people above them that have the say, and I think they're just getting fucked. I think the I think the sim gurus genuinely are just getting fucked in the end. Because think about it this way: Have you guys ever heard of who is above the sim gurus at EA? Because I have never once read who is above the sim gurus, but who gets the shit? Who gets the shit? The sim gurus get shit on because they put out a shitty product, right? When it's not even them having the final say in the product so they're taking the public backlash when it's not even their call what goes in the game and what gets left out if that makes any sense so anyway that's my spiel that's why lately sometimes i slip up and i do it but i really try not to blame the game developers because i know sitting at a desk for eight hours a day they don't want to put out a bad game but it's not they don't control what goes in the game if that makes any sense so that's my spiel every time i think of some except sim guru lindsay i have a problem with sim guru lindsay and i have a sim problem with sim guru grant those are two people that have said stupid stuff on twitter and stupid stuff in their public announcements that are so i i just can't i have no i have no respect and no sympathy for them every time i think of sim gurus i think of cursed paranormal stream homegirl couldn't even get her sim to move to sam's table i know the developers don't even know how to play their own game i sure wouldn't want to do that or else the sims 4 would be less boring than it is now understandable uh, i wonder if they use a simulation lag fix in their live streams does anyone know do they use, i don't think they're allowed to use mods on their live streams but that game is on, on the game is unplayable if you don't have the simulation fix that was the most boring live stream no that's interesting that they can't have the simulation fix oh my god it, it must be so embarrassing when your sims can like barely move on a game that you make you know content for it's like once again they're taking they're taking like the brunt of all the hate in the community they're they're getting it thrown at them she tried to show us the new features and she wouldn't move and she started getting mad <laughs> that's actually kind of funny i kind of want to watch that all right let's let's continue with asmara's video she's currently talking about sims 3. i wasn't surprised that i'm pausing the most in the sims 3 section i'm not that surprised so she just had to go to build mode oh that's so that's so sad their live streams are, are just bare yeah i feel like they're like kind of like robotic they're very uh corporate corporate people like they they don't want to say anything edgy or that might offend so they're very kid friendly it seems like hear how they put a really heavy emphasis on the different personalities you could create in the sims Ooh, 3. different personalities okay so she's gonna she's about to show us the trailer for the sims 3 guys let me get my popcorn out let me turn off my lights because this is about to be a fucking movie in this bitch all right ready you guys using this brand new this, this gun this gonna be a movie oh guys you ready for this movie that we're about to watch and you can see here how they put a really heavy emphasis on the different personalities you could create here we in go sims guys using get your popcorn out the gold digger great player charismatic hope is romantic <laughs> robotic indeed please send help i want to know why they stopped streaming with multiple people i know it's because covid but can they get like more than one person on a stream i'm not sure i actually don't know i haven't i haven't really watched their um their streams that they uh like do for the games and stuff but okay let's let's yeah let's watch this in uh let's watch this in one time speed how they put a really heavy emphasis on the because the sims are gonna look ugly like that's inevitable but the sims 3 using this brand we gotta new watch it slowly system. So he's the klepto. He's mean spirited, vegetarian, kleptomaniac, the gold digger, great kisser, flirt, commitment issues, the player, genius, charismatic, hopeless romantic. But that's not all for your Sims personality. Although I think that's actually a really good way of like advertising the Sims, how they kind of pitched it, because the Sims Four got pitched as what? Well, what have they pitched? I posted it on Twitter the other day. Let me see what I let me see what I posted because I'm forgetting like what they what they pitched uh, the Sims Three as let's see here i made a tweet about it i was i was like this is so funny hold on um smarter okay this is how the sims how the sims team pitched the sims 4 smarter sims weirder stories smarter sims where my sim getting stuck for three hours because the simulation lag is so bad is that smarter sims to you ea is that smarter sims that doesn't that doesn't look like smarter sims anyway so that's kind of like the difference between how they advertise the sims 4 and the sims 3 like 
to call them smarter sims control smarter sims with unique appearances personalities behaviors and emotions emotions are such a flop emotions suck i hate emotions i feel like they should have just kept with moodlets experience new levels of creativity when you sculpt sims the powerful creative sim and design beautiful homes with tactile room-based building mode see but you can't fucking rely on cast and build by to make your simulation game that's a problem Murder Sims, well, if it's true, suddenly... Ah! Oh my god, Milo, you scared the fuck out of me. Holy fuck, that scared me. <laughs> Milo, thank you for your sub at tier two. I appreciate it. Smarter Sims, well, if that's true, then suddenly I'm blind. I know, like, what the fuck? Smarter Sims can't figure out how to pick up their baby. <laughs> Did you guys like the sub noise, too? It's like the... It's... Dude, I thought my Sim was a pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> exactly <laughs> my sim was pregnant yeah i had like the little baby chimes and someone subs not the pregnant time girl ariella's favorite sound. <laughs> ariella's favorite sound <laughs> for those of you that do not watch my let's plays um ariella is a sim in my let's play that this bitch wanted to have 10 fucking kids and she I think even after she got 10 kids, this bitch will not stop having fucking babies. So that's, yeah, that's what, that's what, uh, Twitch Witch is referencing with Ariella's favorite sound. Had to support a fellow Sims for Justice Warrior. <laughs> Thank you, Milo. I really do appreciate it. I love it. I know. <laughs> not the pregnant time girl. <laughs> oh my God, Twitch Witch. That was so, so funny. Her favorite hobby is getting pregnant. Yeah, you guys know how like in Sims 2, they have the hobbies Well. Ariella's favorite hobby is getting knocked up. So that was my sin too. <laughs> All right, so let's continue on with Asmara's video here. Like once and fears and turn on and turn off. Oh, should I, don't have all that I don't have it on speed too. I'm sorry. Ariella has heard that sound one too many times. Please send help for her. <laughs> I can't do that. <laughs> my sim had six kids in my generation slept and I wanted to cry. I know, I know. They just keep getting pregnant over and over and over and over and over again. Oh my God gone the sims 3 expanded on the once and also revamped Ooh, lifetime so right now wishes i didn't i forgot that she brings up lifetime wishes i mean she would have to right oh i can drag this around anywhere sorry i got distracted um but what i wanted to say someone said help for ariella's uterus <laughs> what i wanted to say about lifetime wishes is i think lifetime wishes are really fun i think she's gonna mention now called lifetime wishes the sims 3 had a total of 32 uh, lifetime wishes in the base game 54 32 in base game 32 in base game how many did we have in We're sims 4 base game time. 60 oh my god 86 wishes in sims 3 so we had almost as many lifetime wishes as we had traits in sims 3 that's fucking crazy i didn't realize that it was that much can i for the love of fucking god drag this back down i cannot believe we had almost as many well, lifetime wishes in sims 3 as we had traits i didn't realize it was that many holy shit that's crazy lifetime wishes in the sims 3 the five aspirations that were in the sims 2 are still technically in the sims 3 they're just a bit more detailed and look they're more detailed guys 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 Looking for a total of 86 she said she said the five she said the five aspirations that were in sims 2 are still technically in the sims 3 aspirations that were in the sims 2 are still technically in the sims 3 they're just a bit they're just a bit more detailed and can be more individual to specific sims i mean that pretty much sums up my feelings towards the sims 3 man it's fucking detailed as fuck are we sure Ariella hasn't gotten tired yet? <laughs> a bit more detailed and can be more individual to specific sims. For example, instead of having like... Also, I kind of like how this entire... How long... Okay, so her Sims 2 section was six minutes. Her Sims 3 se section section is... Almost seven minutes. Okay, look at that. That just sums up the content. That just sums up the content right here. Seven minutes... Oh my fucking god! It's... <laughs> thank you mystical i appreciate you subbing i really do thank you both of you milo and mystical i really do appreciate the support guys Mwah! love you and thank you for the baby chime noise i'm pregnant now thank you <laughs> baby 11 <laughs> so anyway look at this okay so this part of sims 2 is six so yeah around seven okay maybe my math is wrong seven minutes seven minutes for sims 2 Seven minutes for Sims 3. I'm not even going to go in how much Sims 1 is because that's rude. Every time someone subs, Ariella gets pregnant. <laughs> that's true. Yeah, Ariella gets pregnant every time someone subs. It's like a general romance aspiration. Your Sim could want to be a heartbreaker or a gold digger. In heartbreaker? Like heartbreaker? Okay. Did you guys know I have played The Sims 3 for 11 years of my life and I have never done the gold digger aspiration? I've never done it. 
I've never done it. Getting pregnant with with your somewhat dead husband is a mood. <laughs> her her vampire husband, yes. Yes, that's rude. Yes, because it's rude to rag on Sims 1. I really cannot like Sims Sims 1 is it, it was it's a product of its time okay i cannot make fun of her because she was the basis of everything and i think that's a pretty unspoken rule in the sims community is it's not cool to rag on sims one right like ragging on sims one is like picking on a baby because it cannot do anything it's defenseless so on and so forth who's actually done the heartbreaker lifetime wish i have done heartbreaker i have not done gold digger i feel like gold digger is kind of the black widow challenge in my in my mind me either but i totally should heartbreaker is a really fun one heartbreaker is super fun it's easier to do with male sims i think i haven't done that either i've got i've done gold digger yeah i haven't done gold digger i've only done heartbreaker i mean out of those two like romance romantic sort of wishes but okay so so what uh asmar is bringing up here is the fact that like in we we had in sims 2 so in Sims 2, you had the romance aspiration, you had the family aspiration, you have the knowledge aspiration. What Asmara is saying here is that they are more fleshed out. So for example, in the Sims 3, there's like she's showing right here, gold digger is to see the ghost of a wealthy spouse. So that would that would allude you to thinking that that would be under the romance aspiration if it if we were like trying to make parallels between Sims 2 and Sims 3. And Heartbreaker would also be under the uh, Sims 2 aspiration of romance. So I think it's really interesting how we have here like these two sort of aspirations that are more fleshed out than how Sims 2 aspirations were done. So it's interesting. I trapped my Sims sugar daddy in her garage and let him starve. I've never killed a Sim because I'm that weak. I'm not crazy though. <laughs> Connor, I don't think you can say you, you you trapped your Sims sugar daddy in her garage and then let him starve without sounding crazy. I don't, I don't think that's possible. A general knowledge aspiration. Your Sims lifetime wish could be to max out a certain skill or a certain set of skills. For the most part, lifetime wishes are kind of like tutorials to guide you through the different features of the Sims 3, new skills, careers, and even like new expansion pack features. But I do like how they can be more individual and still feel a little bit more personal to specific Sims. But speaking of skills, in the Sims 3, your Sims can acquire so many specific skills. Instead of just having like a creativity skill like you do in the Sims 2, you have like guitar and painting and writing. Oh, did you guys see him? Wait, did you guys just see him? He's gonna acquire so many specific skills instead Hold of on. having like a creativity skill like you do in the Sims 2. You have like guitar. <gasps> Who's that? Who's that man? Who's that mystery redhead? Mm. Oh my god. And painting and writing. If you watch my season one of my Lepacy, you know what I mean. <laughs> I remember when I was younger and I played a po politician and she needed funding for a political party, so she just grew weed in her garage. What the fuck? <laughs> I love that. The supernatural jelly beans and emotionally mirthy mirthy bed are so dangerous for accidental deaths. I'm I was trying to have um, Penelope for my supernatural let's play uh, eat the jelly beans and I even commentated I was like um if she dies in this moment like I'm actually gonna reset her because I was not ready to let Penelope die then in there so yeah <laughs> omg hank daddy daddy goddard yes you guys you guys all know not me being like who is that sim <laughs> he, yeah it's hank goddard He's such a snack. And this is his wife, Pauline, right here. Uh, oh, guys, the coon is over here. Oh, this is my actual baby. This is my actual baby right here. Oh my God. This is Molly. This is Molly. I made a whole video dedicated to Molly French. Uh, my favorite sim in all of Sunset Valley. Yes, Pauline Juan. Yes, this is Pauline on the right. And then this is Molly on the left. Molly is my favorite Sunset Valley Sim, period. I made a whole video, if you haven't seen it, it's on my channel. Whole video talking about Molly, why I love her, my deep, found, profound love for Molly. So if you're interested in that, I, I'm not going to flesh out why I love her now, but Miss Molly, exactly. She's just, I love her, just an icon. <laughs> like like Diego said, look at her being an icon. <laughs> Which I guess you could also consider as your Sims interest because depending on what skill. Wait, I kind of like how this video is not at all about the Sims, those two Sims, but I just like went off on a tangent. <laughs> off topic, but I'm playing Sims 3 right now. What world should I play? Um, Sunset Valley, it's the best. Mine's a bunch family, especially Jack. Jack you have some of them can be used as conversation topics in games. Or guys do it. in this game, which is kind of like the first version of emotions we ever got to see in The Sims. Movements were pretty basic in The Sims 3, but still had an impact on your Sims' lives. Mm. Sims would acquire I love moodlets. Like moodlets based on their traits, their surroundings, or recent interaction. I love moodlets, and I like how they uh, facilitate, or they um, oscillate. They oscillate depending on what your Sim is around. So if my Sim is in a room that has a nice, a bunch of paintings on it, then they get nicely decorated. I, th I think it's really cool how 
when my sim leaves that room, then their then their uh, moodlet removes it. I think that's a really cool feature. I'm a sunlit tide stan. I love the bunch family, but they were so hideous. <laughs> I think of the moodlet as a temporary memory system from Sims 2 mixed with how emotions were supposed to work in the Sims 4, but we'll get more into that later. I think that's a really cool point too, that she makes a temporary memory system, a temporary memory system. I don't know if I would call them a temporary memory system. I think it's an interesting parallel to try and make. I would more so say that they are closer to emotions in Sims 4 than they are memory Sims 2. Yeah, I think I would say that. I like Ethan Bunch, but I don't like Lisa Bunch. Sunset Valley is the best. I don't make the rules. I love Sunset Valley. I really do love Sunset Valley so much. I, lo I like Lucky Palms as well. Lucky Palms, Sunset Valley, some of my faves. I think that Sunset Valley is really good for storytelling, but uh, Lucky Palms is really good for good looking Sims like Darren Dreamer. <laughs> I don't make the rules. <laughs> if your house is nicely decorated, for example, a sim could acquire like the nicely decorated moodlet, which will just increase their mood every time they go into their house. But if your house is disgusting, you have like food in the trash, rotting food in the fridge, disgusting toilets and sinks, whatever, your sim could acquire a vile surroundings moodlet as long as they're not a slob, which will just decrease their mood. Negative moodlets weren't the end all be all for your sims, but if your sim's mood did get too low, you wouldn't be able to like do little things like make your bed if you're hungry or take a shower if you're too tired. This is so fucking annoying. Um, side note, my sim in my Supernatural Let's Play was hungry, right? Penelope went to the bakery, she was hungry. And I had her go up to the case, the pastry case, and this bitch couldn't fucking buy food from the pastry case. That is so annoying. It's small oversights like that that make me really annoyed with The Sims 3. And this is coming from someone that has a profound fucking love for The Sims 3, okay? And it's stuff like that that annoys the fuck out of me. <laughs> OMG, the cursed chocolate pie. I know, like this shit would not fucking get out of my Sims or in inventory. I could not have them grab a slice of the chocolate pie in one of my Supernatural Let's Plays, whatever, however many episodes that was ago. So annoying. Uh. <laughs> Longer lasting moodlets will have a deeper effect on your sims. These appear for like major life events like marriage, the birth of a child, graduating university, or the death of a loved one. So that's pretty much how moodlets work in The Sims 3. The Sims 3 also introduced favorites, which didn't really do much but add a few new conversation topics, but I feel like they Also, Sims 4 has so much lag for me as Sims 3, and I have a build that should be able to run more than perfectly. I don't get people who say it runs amazingly, and also just to be clear, saying that Sims 3 just some four years, making fun of this term is meant to be making fun of the term social justice warrior and conservatives who use it not because people who are labeled social justice warrior because of me i don't get people who say sims 4 works amazingly i have a build that should run it more than probably oh you just yeah you just yeah but uh, i'm more than lag with sims 3. i just think sims 4 is dry so that's why i don't play i, I don't know about the lag though i don't have sims 4 lag unless i don't use the simulation um lag fix then i'll have lag if i do not use that simulation lag fix but other than that, my Sims 4 runs pretty good, actually. I also have not played it in a while. You know what I do get, though? I'll get the glitch where I can't click on anything, and I have to hit my escape key in order to make my game, like, catch up to itself so I can actually, like, click stuff. That's what I do get. Sims 4 has gotten laggy since Eco Love Cell. Oh, I remember you struggled with that chocolate pie. I know, like, what the fuck was going on with that chocolate pie and my Supernatural, that's why I don't understand. <laughs> they were still, like, a fun feature to have in the game. Sims would get positive movements. Oh, I would like to know what your guys' thoughts on the personality uh, tab for here is. Like, do you, do you like being able to choose your Sims' favorite color? Do you, okay, here's a better question. If your Sim has a favorite color, will you dress your Sim in that favorite color? Answer me right now, right now. Do you dress your sim in their favorite color? Go. <laughs> yes. 100% yes. I use my sim's favorite color to dress my sims. Yes. Yes. Hell yeah. Holy f- Oh, I, oh my god. I saw those- I saw- I saw those clouds like moving across the screen on the other monitor. I was like, what the fuck? Um, hell yeah. Yes. Depends sometimes. Yes. Okay, so this is- this is a really good poll then. So, them removing- color favorite color from the sims 4 in using the defense that no one used it is kind of stupid right because we like i just i just made a conclusive poll right now that people do use a favorite color in sims 3 so then removing it in sims 4 isn't oh the player do doesn't use it or they don't want it like that's not a good good enough defense to remove a, like a feature like this I, I love to dress my sims in their favorite color and decorate their rooms in, in their favorite color. Exactly. Decorate their rooms and everything. It, it feels like it's a part of their personality. It feels like it's a necessity for me to, you know, have my sim. I mean, of course, they don't know, you know, their favorite color could be yellow and their their room could be pink. But I mean, it's, it's more of like a storytelling thing rather than my sim acknowledging that I use their favorite color. 
I literally just colored my Sims kids' bedrooms purple because it was their favorite color. If I have twins, I'll like blend those two favorite colors together and like make that their favorite color. I don't know. I think I mentioned that before, but that's what I do. Hi, twins. I decorate the rooms with their color more than I dress them up in that color. That's interesting. Decorate rooms, yes. I feel like it's just a small detail, but a re thing relatable to real life. Everyone has the and uses favorite colors in their space in life. A small thing to make them happy. Exactly. That's that's a really good point, right, Tato? I put my Sims favorite in each outfit. Yeah. I, I use it in their in every outfit category if I can. If I can manage to weasel my way. If their favorite color is blue, then they'll have some aspect of blue in their formal attire, in their everyday attire, in their athletic attire, in their swimwear, and so on and so forth it's for listening to their favorite music or eating their favorite foods if your sins became great friends with someone they might get a want to learn their favorite food and cook that for them their favorite color really didn't do anything but i personally think it's kind of fun to correspond your sins outfit to their favorite color or to base their house or their room based on their favorite color so, so as mara literally just said what we just said right now <laughs> like word for word what we just said she, this bitch knows she knows she's on our same wave, wavelength <laughs> things that i feel like add to your sims personality but speaking of customization we have to talk about creatism in the sims 3 compared to the sims 2 the sims 3 creatism was like the best oh we've seen. <laughs> did you guys see that right there did you guys see what this is <laughs> Wow, 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 wow. The Sims 3 cast was literally iconic. Um, laggy as hell, but still iconic. We were all familiar laggy with Laggy as hell, but still nice. iconic. This, depending on your perspective, the color wheel. The Sims 3 offered so much more customization. For color wheels. Color wheels, my, uh, at times, my greatest ally, and at worst, my worst enemy. <laughs> it's so laggy. Like, oh, God, color wheel, man. I love, I love color wheel with my whole heart, but holy shit, she just sometimes fucks me over. Your sims physical appearance and for the oh my god jay get out of my stream please <laughs> for houses the color wheel allowed us to customize the color print and pattern of everything so create a style this sort of naturally became another way that we could express our sims personality of course we cannot talk about this in three without talking about the open world the open world takes your sims out of their own home sanctuary and into a larger experience having your sims being a part of a larger story was an aspect heavily emphasized in the initial marketing for the reminder sims. of the last stream oh my god yeah when my fucking color wheel fucked me over in the last stream Ugh. i think one of the coolest things about the sims 3 <laughs> Y'all, who is it? Who the fuck is it? I'm ready to fucking fight. I'm ready to fucking fight. Guys, look who it is. The myth, the legend, the woman herself. Lindsay motherfucking Pearson. Fuck this girl. <laughs> is that Sarah Palin? <laughs> Sarah Palin, yes. Is the fact that oh, God. Okay, wait, can we listen? Okay, let's listen to what she actually says. Let's listen to what Sarah Palin, I mean, Lindsay Pearson actually says was an aspect heavily right, emphasized in the initial marketing for The Sims 3. I think one of the coolest things, about the, the coolest things about The Sims 3 is the fact that my story is, is a part of... My story is part of a bigger... A bigger story. Wait, 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 wait. What did she say before? Didn't you guys say... Weren't you guys just saying that Lindsay Pearson was the exact one that said she doesn't like all these aspects of her game, like to have to control all of them? Isn't that what she said? Hold on. Girly backtracked? Exactly! What the fuck? She totally backtracked! What a liar! Did her perspective of Sims 3 really change in eight years from The Sims 3 to The Sims 4? Wasn't someone just saying earlier that Lindsay Pearson said she doesn't like Sims 3 because there's too many things going on at the same time? And she's now she's saying, back when Sims 3 first came out, she says, the neighborhood is growing and changes around me and my characters. Super Nanny really wanted that coin. <laughs> the neighborhood is growing and changing around me and my characters. And the story that I'm telling is a- Ooh, these Sims look tragic as fuck without that custom content. Oh my God, they look story, so bad. The neighborhood is growing and changing around me and my characters. And the story that I'm telling is a- <laughs> Same. <laughs> by that, and their stories are affected by me. I think the unique thing about- Oh my God, that is insane. Wait, Having an okay, when I first watched Asmara's video the first time around, I didn't make the connection that Lindsay Pearson said that she doesn't like all those aspects, you know, when she's working on The Sims 4 right now. But then back in 2009, suddenly she likes the wide open neighborhood and like everything to kind of be, you know, going on at the same time, like chaotically. So either she's lying or her opinion changed within like, six years of time seven years however long it is between games okay then an open world is that in the sims 2 oh, i would argue speed too. that like your sims oh shit wait has the text i'm so sorry guys if the text has been cut off this entire time like heavily connected through the memory system and through you know the lore and the rich storytelling and background but i feel like in the sims 3 she really pretends she does not like it Yep. Your sims get connected to their town i like how many different towns you can either download or get <clears> off to your store or i can tell as mara's a oh Oh, Simstery Store. I want to talk about the Simstery Store in a second here. But I can tell Asmara is a uh, Simstery player. 
and I mean, I guess my perspective of that is kind of warped because I know that she primarily plays Sims 3, but even by the way that she kind of talks about Sims 3, you can tell that she um, is kind of like an avid, 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 avid player of Sims 3. That come with expansion packs. They're very diverse and each world has its own vibe. And What's her name? Uh, who, the YouTuber that made the video or uh, her, the one that made the video is Asmara. I can't believe I'm not subbed to her. What the fuck? <laughs> I think because I use my school account um, primarily, like I use my school account to link up my Google account and stuff like that. So I, I don't really, I actually, fun fact guys, I do not use my A Cotton Sock account all that much to watch YouTube videos. I primarily use my school account, but yeah. So Aesthetic as Mara yeah, on just... YouTube is her name. But if you're talking about the one that I was just complaining about, Lindsay Pearson, she's the Sims 4 general manager person and she was talking about right now, like right now, Lindsay Pearson's saying that she doesn't like open world because it's really chaotic. But then like literally we just watched the clip where Lindsay Pearson says she likes open world because the neighborhood like grows as her Sims grow. So like I said, either her opinion changed or in six years or seven years, whatever, Lindsay Pearson is demon spawn. <laughs> that's, that's quite the opinion there, Twitch Witch, damn feel to it. And especially when you install custom worlds, like you can really find a world for anything that you are looking for in The Sims 3. Another more minor feature of The Sims 3 is autonomy. Sims would finally be able to take care of their own needs autonomously in The Sims 3, which makes it great so you don't have to like micromanage all of your Sims all the time. The Sims 3 also removed two needs. So your Sim no longer has the room need or the environment need. And The Sims 3 also- I actually like the fact that they got- I'm so sorry. Oh my God. I really feel bad for Asmara. Um, but I kind of like the fact that they got rid of the environment and um comfort need. I like that. I like that. I feel like maybe they could have kept the comfort need in there. The comfort need makes sense to me because my in my head, if your sim has low comfort in Sims 2, that makes me feel like maybe they have like a bad back or um, they're having like cramps in their legs or something like that. You know what I mean? So comfort is actually a need that I like from Sims 2, but the environment one, I guess kind of got overhauled with the moodlet system. So. I'm okay with environment being gone. I'm more so sad that comfort left as one of the needs that Sims have to require or that Sims have to fulfill. Like Miss Ma'am, I did not compare a dollhouse to the early Sims. And yes, the Sims are just adult Barbies, but that doesn't mean I want my Sims and Sims 4 to look like they're literally made of plastic. We're in 2021 who actually knows how to raise a comfort need. <laughs> uh, that's, that's really funny, actually. That's true. You agree, Milo? The comfort need. But I feel like those two things, the environment and the comfort, are basically kind of replaced with like moodlets. Although not perfect, <clears> I feel like The Sims 3 reflected a lot more of Will Wright Sims 2 example than not. This focus on the individual Sims and the user customization can be seen through create a sim and in game, through the traits, the favorites, the lifetime wishes, the moodlets, as well as through build and buy. The Sims are always the main focus, but all the other features just sort of built off of that. And that's basically how life simulation was done in The Sims 3. The Sims 3 was an extension of what made The Sims 2 so popular. It took an approachable subject to everyday life and allowed for open ended narrative with county backstories, with relationships and connections already set up for you when you loaded up the game. Worlds that felt individual and vast and interconnected. The Sims 3 had rich gameplay with an array of collectibles, skills, wants, moodlets, um, behaviors that made your Sims feel individual. Can we also talk about hidden skills? Hidden skills in Sims 3 are amazing. Hidden skills were primarily introduced with Sims 3 Supernatural, i.e. like the lycanthropy skill for werewolves. Alchemy isn't a hidden skill, I don't think. But uh, primarily with Sims 3 Supernatural, they added hidden skills. And hidden skills are amazing. I love hidden skills. And I like how... I feel like in Sims 4, everything that the game has is kind of put in your face. Whereas with Sims 3, there's a lot of layers to the game and some are hidden behind certain like invisible, you know, invisible um, ceilings. Bro like skating, exactly. The claw machine hidden skill <laughs> or the arcade machine hidden skill even. So I like how with Sims 3, there are layers to, there are layers to, to the game in general, but skills in specific have a lot of uh, layers. Homework hidden skill, exactly. <laughs> the, the more skill your Sims have, the, the faster they do their homework, right? So it's cool that that is hidden behind like a like a invisible wall. I feel like everything in Sims 4 is very surface level and what the game has, they show you. They, they bring it to your attention. But with Sims 3, a lot of, uh, a lot of things are like underneath the surface, right? windsurfing though <laughs> even expansion packs that felt expansive and pretty flexible you know for different types of gameplay expansive and flexible expansion packs sims 3 supernatural perhaps 
play. Of course, with a few exceptions. <laughs> the Sims 3 managed all this while still having huge fan involvement. I thought she says with a few exceptions. And flexible, you know, for different types of gameplay. Of course, with a few exceptions. Of course, with a few exceptions. We're looking at you, Katy Perry sweet treat stuff. <laughs> the Sims 3 managed all this while still having huge fan involvement. An example of this is how the Sims 3 generations came to be. I found this tweet from literally AJ who says that Generations was made in direct response to criticism of the lacking family gameplay. And then he uh, Generations was made in direct response to criticism of lacking family gameplay. That's an interesting statement to make. It, I don't think I necessarily agree with that. Because let me let me let me let me frame it this way. Let me take off my headphones here because this might kind of be a long spiel. Okay, so back in the Sims 3 days, um, game changers did not exist. So uh oh my god, my hair is so fucked up from those headphones. <laughs> okay, so criticism was not like brought to the attention of uh of sim gurus via game changers so back back in 2013 2012 see i have a hard time believing that generations was made in a direct response to criticism of lacking family gameplay i don't think it was community feedback that prompted the game devs to make generations and here's why sims 3 vastly was a extremely small community we're talking in the in the days of andrew arcade in the days of queen in the game in the in the games in the days of life simmer and if you go back and you watch andrew arcade if you go back and you watch queen if you go back and you watch life simmer they talk extremely positively about the sims 3 and there is very very little vocal um feedback from them complaining about the game uh through their videos and you got to remember it, it wasn't like there was popular like sims twitter people back then it was fans and it was sims gurus back then in the sims 3 like twitter space so vastly far and wide the youtubers were the voices of criticism to the sim gurus okay and if you go back and you watch james turner from 2012 if you go back and watch queen life simmer andrew kid etc etc from 2012 there is very little if any feedback genuine criticism of the sims 3 it's because the community back then was so tight-knit and small i remember i uh won a queen giveaway I, I i won a queen giveaway and she gifted me stuff on the sims 3 exchange do you know how cool that is the fact that the community was so small that queen could have these sort of giveaways and you know little 10 year old maddie was one of the ones that won the giveaway like the community was small enough that it was feasible for queen to be able to send content to you know simmers like i was 10 years old and i won a queen giveaway so that just really goes to goes to show how little the community was back then um oh my god that's so cool rip queen i know i was so heartbroken i remember the the day that that sort of news broke um i was i watched queen religiously i used to talk to her or talk to her talk about her to my friends in when i was in like fourth fifth grade and my my friend didn't even play sims but because i talked to her so much she kind of grew this sort of like admiration uh towards this towards the sims 3 and towards queen who she you know didn't even watch or or um, play the sims 3 so i uh i remember the day that the news broke i was telling my friend about it and i was getting like choked up because queen had such an integral part of my development as a young child and it's it's so important for me to um recognize that and, and talk about queen because i mean by today's standards her lps may not be the most uh exciting or drama packed but back then queen was it like she was she was the top of the top you know besides and then i would say life simmer trailed a little bit behind her the the way that i kind of look at the sims community during that time was queen was at the top of the game back then and then um after she passed life simmer kind of um she kind of like queen kind of gave her her crown and, and life simmer took over and uh so 
that's kind of like how I kind of frame that time period for of Sims 3 YouTube. Anyway, so back to, hi Harry, how are you? Hello. <laughs> I'm just talking about the Sims community, like the in the old days. <laughs> Um, those were the best sims years her pets lp was amazing i think i started queen i started watching queen when i saw her generations lp i do believe i'm doing good how are you i'm i'm we're almost four hours into the stream and i cannot believe it is four hours i feel like i've only been doing this for like 20 minutes holy shit um anyway so back to my general point here sorry i'm trying to keep up with chat yes like i love how the majority of sims 3 expansions like supernatural island paradise and the future world adventures offer an entirely new experience compared to packs that just add stuff that should have just been in base game time flies when you're streaming i know i love x sim sugar so much she's uh she was a scottish girl right she was scottish i think yeah i she was towards the end i think it was a little bit I think I was a sim YouTuber by the time that Sim Sugar was like having her comeuppance um, in the Sims community. Yes, she is. Yeah. Okay. So I was going to say basically. Okay. So, so all that to say to come back to this tweet right here. Now, I don't think that Generations was made in a direct response to criticism of lacking family gameplay. I don't agree with this tweet. Um, I don't even want to happen to Pink Sim. I know she was like best friends with life simmer i think right if i'm remembering correctly and ipod zeke as well uh, ipod zeke and queen were really like they were like this i don't know what happened to him either uh the only one that lasted until now is delagracy and um james right does anyone remember sims 3 senbai i see i don't i didn't i didn't really watch the sims community minus queen um x urban simmer is great oh yeah right 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 x urban simmer she still makes videos too yes yes i follow her on twitter i yeah i don't really watch uh sims 3 videos but if it's unless it's like pleasant sims or um plumbella but she doesn't really make you know obviously they made like sims 4 videos i used to watch nicole k games i loved her commentary she's still active but has a lot on her plate yes nicole k games i used to comment on her videos and she would like respond to me i felt like i was fucking famous <laughs> i remember one time i used to have a old sims channel i will never talk about it i will never show you guys the videos um or show you the channel because i'm so embarrassed of it but uh i remember i had um i had well, first of all, the whole queen thing where she gifted me on the Sims 3 exchange. I wish I could bring it up and show you guys because I want to see like what she gifted me, like what I wanted on my playlist or on my playlist, on my like wish list on the Sims 3 store. That'd be so interesting. Like what did 10 year old Maddie want on her Sims 3 wish list <laughs> that queen sent her? I think it was. Oh, my God. I really want to look right now. I really want to look. All right. Let me see if I can pull it up. I'm going to bring it into another uh, monitor so that you guys cannot like wait can i um okay i'm gonna okay let's um like sims 3 exchange let's see what queen sent me let's see what queen sent me 10 year old maddie i wonder if it'll show do you guys think it'll show from all the way back then oh god it's making me re what you have to sign in with your ea account what oh wait that makes sense i thought i thought the sims 3 store or the sims 3 website and uh ea were like totally separate did they merge them or something oh I just slashed my Discord. Oopsie. Queen was an icon. I remember that. Uh, I was watching her Palace of Versailles uh, store review, and Queen goes so into detail about the history of uh, Rococo era and the fashion era. Her videos were so high quality. Nicole King Games was a moment. Yes. Pretty sure they merged it. Yeah, they merged it. They definitely merged those two. Wait, what the fuck is my login? Sign in with your EA account. Hmm. Mm, honey i really want to see what she sent me i really do let's see let's see let's see let's see i'm trying to think what it could be i think i got it i think i got it okay uh, i'm like so interested now to see what i got okay i got it i got it guys i got it i got my i got my stuff i got my stuff uh i had something in my shopping cart what the fuck Sim Guru Monkey sent me a message. You successfully registered your Sims 3 game. What the fuck? <laughs> okay, let's see. Store, my store account, purchase history. Will it show my purchase history? Hold on, I'm looking at chat. Um, Life Simmer still streams all the time. Hold on, sorry, I'm like trying to read chat and like get on my purchase history. 
Uh, do I have it still? Christina? Wait, 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 wait. Isn't Christina... Wait, isn't this Life Simmer? Oh my god, I keep fucking flashing my Discord. Is this not Life Simmer? Is this not Life Simmer? Isn't, isn't this her Sims 3 store account? Yes? Guys! Guys, I got shit from Life Simmer too! <laughs> Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I have shit from Life Simmer. Oh my god. Look at this. Look at this, guys. C gifted from Christina. Gifted from Christina. <laughs> oh my god. And then I gifted other people. I, I gifted someone their a tab cast. I gifted someone, like, cinnamon roll hair. I gifted someone um, a little, some dresses and stuff like that. I gifted so many people. That's so cool. I love that I gifted people. This is, I wish this, I wish we still use this. Although I kind of hate the business model, but okay. Pink aces. Okay. So queen gifted me this lingerie and this like little baby outfit. That's what she gifted me. Interesting. It's cool to look back at like all this stuff I have on here. I don't even know where I got some of it. Like, I bought... I cannot believe I bought stuff from the Sims 3 store. What a rip. What a rip off. <laughs> what a rip off, honestly. Okay, that is fucking crazy to me. That I have shit from... Wow. Insane. Life Simmer still streams all the time. Um, she doesn't have to make videos of everyone's... Yeah, I watch her stream sometimes. She streams, like, Sims 2. Give me some queen. Oh, bitch. If I had... If I had sim points, I would give them away. I have 17 sim points. If you can find something from the Simster store for 17 sim points, I will gift you something, but I'm not gonna... I got my sim store content for games for... I mean the sim store. Yeah, I know. I know what you mean. <laughs> I'm not... I'm not gonna buy sim points because this is a fucking ripoff. Like, I could give you a sims game and it would be more valuable than fucking sim points ever are. So, okay. Anyway moving on moving on from that um so let's continue this video by asmara let's do the last three minutes of it uh this has been wow last two hours we've been watching this asmara video together okay so that goes to show i got off on a tangent there how the fuck did i get on that tangent so my thing here is that there was no there was no criticism of the sims 3 back then the, the criticism was not coming from youtubers which were literally like I feel like Sims 3 YouTubers back in 2012 era for the Sims 3 are what game changers are today. There was really no like active Twitter fan base for the Sims 3. So what I'm trying to say is by and large, Sims 3 did not have a lot of criticism. And I personally think that Generations was made um, in house. I don't think the idea came externally for generations. I think it was a product of the developers being like, oh shit, like we're missing, we're missing gameplay for families, which, which if you notice, they thought of generate, if, if my theory is correct, they thought of generations in house. Like it wasn't external people that had to tell them, hey, your guys' game really sucks and we can't do much with families. You know what I mean? It was it was them, uh, it was it was them knowing that their game fucking sucks. It, it it's it's them okay, not fucking sucks, but like the gameplay uh for families fucking sucks. It's them being very self-aware and stuff about the status in, in that that sort of gameplay is missing from their game. And Sims 4 lacks self-awareness like this. You will never see in this in the history of the Sims 4, Sims 4 developers realizing that the that the family aspects of their game fucking sucks, like the Sims 4 the Sims 3 developers did when they realized that their gameplay for families was missing. Because the Sims 4 development team is not self-aware like that. Like they they're they're not in tuned because I feel like they don't they don't they don't um game test their games. They don't game test their patches and all that sort of stuff so there's a big lack of self-aware of awareness with the sims 4 uh development team and like i mentioned earlier i'm really trying to stray away from blaming the sim gurus but for their i mean i don't really have any sympathy towards them when they like the family gameplay aspect like this is should be a number one priority issue your sims are flat your sims do nothing they're basically just pixels on a screen they do not feel like real people like they did in sims 2 and sims 3 so fix it like that should be top of my priority list not making paranormal expansion packs 
recycling fucking ghosts and, and shit from your previous games. Like, make, make family. Family is the fucking basis of the Sims franchise. Why? Why are we having problems with, with finding family content? Copy paste Sims 3 Generations. We would be fine if we got a repeat of Sims 3 Generations in The Sims 4. We would be fine with it. No one would, no one would shit on you. No one would care. Just fucking take what you, like the code is already fucking written is what I don't understand. The code from Sims 3 is already written. So copy and paste that code from Sims 3 Generations, paste it in the Sims 4, update it a little bit to work with your brand new shitty game engine and call it a day. <laughs> Looking at my Sims 3 memories and one of them is just a picture of a random ugly child with the caption scarred for life. <laughs> I mean, didn't the developers on The Sims 4 team say that they didn't like the game aspect? I mean, the family aspect. Um, I think that Sim Guru Grant said some head ass shit where he was like, oh, I'm not a, I'm not a family simmer. I like to play with one Sim. And this is the problem that I have with these Sim Gurus on Twitter. Cause Lindsay fucking Pearson did the same fucking thing. Sim Guru Grant said that he doesn't like playing with families and he likes to focus on one sim. Okay, Sim Guru Grant, that's your fucking opinion. So 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 have your opinion and make family gameplay for people that want to play with families. Is that so hard? Lindsay Pearson did the same fucking thing. She said that she doesn't like open worlds and or not open worlds. She doesn't like um the town she doesn't like the chaotic nature of the town. And Harry, you weren't in here when we when we uh, watched this clip, but she was working on The Sims 3 too. Okay, I don't know if I can go back because I, I might not. Hold on, let me, let me mark where I am in this video. Let me show you the clip we just watched earlier, Harry. So this was fucking bonkers. Lindsay Pearson says that Look at this. Listen, listen to what she fucking says. This is this is the most hypocritical shit I have ever fucking heard in my life. Listen to this. For The Sims 3. I think one of the coolest things about The Sims 3. I think one of the coolest aspects about The Sims 3 is the fact that my story that is a part of a story. The bigger story. The neighborhood is growing and changing around me and my characters. The growing and changing around me and my characters. And the story that I'm, and the story I'm, that I'm telling is affected by that and their stories are affected by me. Bitch. Bitch. Why, how did your tune change in seven years and suddenly you don't like the chaotic nature of The Sims 3? This fucking, this is, this is like a demo, this is like a demo video for Sims 3, right? And she's, here she's saying she likes the chaotic nature and that her story is by and large connected to the larger neighborhood. But then suddenly, seven years later, six years later in The Sims 4, her opinion changes. Make it make sense. Hi hypocrisy loves. Exactly. It's it's just crazy. Like and, and here's and here's my here and here's the point that I wanted to make. So Sim Guru Grant and Lindsay Pearson do this thing where they get their little Twitter fingers and they try and speak for the community. They, they, they try to be like, okay, well, personally, I don't like family gameplay. I like to play with one sim. Okay, Sim Guru Grant, continue to talk on Twitter, continue to say some head ass opinions. I'll respect you, possibly. But that doesn't mean that I should be like exiled from The Sims 4 just because you who are who have, you know, you're like one of the bigger guys at EA just because you don't like to play with families. Why does that mean that me, Harry, Twitch, Witch, Milo shouldn't be able to play with fucking families? You know what I mean? Sorry, I was just picking you guys out of chat, you know, <laughs> anyway. Um, so they talk. They, they talk generally, they, they try to talk for us. And that is so annoying. That is so annoying. <laughs> um, I understand they have to promote their game, but they have no business posting that shit on Twitter. Exactly. It's not the Sims if family gameplay doesn't work. Like, exactly. So uh, basically my problem with Sim Guru Grant and Sim, uh, Sim Guru Lindsay Pearson, Miss Lindsay Pearson, she also did that awful fucking interview with James Turner which did not paint her in a flattering light at all because she's very um, dismissive. Um, if you Have you guys ever watched that video she has with James Turner where she is like talking about, uh, James Turner was asking her pretty direct questions like why is there no open worlds in Sims 4, blah, 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 blah. And um, yeah, it, cu it cuts off at the end. Not only that, but she's very dismissive and she dodges questions. It's almost like, uh, it's almost like 
You know when actors, I don't know if you guys know this, but actors, before they take an interview, like say they are going to like um, E! Network or they're going to, you know, be interviewed by ABC or NBC or something, they're, those questions that those interviewers ask those actors and actresses are screened by a PR company. Like the PR company says, okay, um, you're gonna ask about so-and-so's romance with so-and-so. Well, we don't want to cause any controversy, so we're gonna scrap that question and you can replace that with another question. It seems as though Lindsay was given the script of questions that James Turner was going to give, or that was James Turner was gonna ask her, and she came up with these like, um, evasive sort of like I guess sort of answers to the questions that don't quite fully answer the question but maybe in the moment to James Turner it felt like she answered the question I don't blame James Turner but Lindsay Pearson was being extremely evasive in that interview um you know she's mad when she starts holding the post-it notes I know like I swear to god I I don't I I don't know I I think I have like ADD where I like can't focus on something and so having something in my hand and like Lindsay brings tears to my eyes <laughs> having something in my hand like this like really helps me focus so <clears throat> anyway so um it, it Lindsay Pearson is extremely evasive and I don't think that she has the best intentions for the sims even though she claims to she claims to have the best intentions for the sims 4 in mind the things that she says on Twitter and the fact that she speaks by and large for us the simmers doesn't sit right with me and neither does sim guru grant saying that because he likes to play with sims by himself that means that everyone else does i don't know much of developers that were on sims 2 didn't leave sims 3 and sims 4 may have been different i think yeah i think there's probably some developers that have been working on um that are on the team you know what maybe i don't maybe i don't i don't know i'm kind of like talking my can we talk about the gurus on Sparked? I actually never watched Sparked and I refuse to watch it because I do not want, I mean, no respect to the YouTubers that were on there. Most of them I watched like on a pretty consistent basis. Um, but I just don't like those sort of shows and Lindsay Pearson, evil trait confirmed. <laughs> um, I just, it doesn't like appeal to me. Spark, Spark doesn't really appeal to me. I don't know. But I was gonna say um, to Harry's uh, statement, Personally, I think that there's probably still some gurus from Sims 3 that work on Sims 4, but I cannot, there's no way that, that any uh, gurus stuck around from, from Sims 2 to Sims 4. That's way too much to spend with EAs in their ass hattery. Spark was a shit show. The YouTubers are good, but Grant, oh God. <laughs> That's insane, actually. Oh my god. All right, so let's watch the last three three minutes of Asmara's, um, Asmara's video here. And uh, then we can kind of just do a general recap. Only watch it for Plumbella. I love Plumbella. She's such a sweetheart. Of the lacking family gameplay. And then he goes on in this Twitter thread to explain how the Sims 3 generations kind of fix those problems that the community had. And of course, modders, custom content creators, and eventually YouTubers all sort of added to the heavy fan involvement that existed during the Sims 3's prime time. The Sims 3 also supported various play styles. You could be a builder, a stylist, or a storyteller. If you were a more casual player, you could pick up the Sims 3 base game and still have a lot of fun with it. The Sims 3 was still oh a game. Oh my god, can we talk about the amount of content in the Sims 3 base game? Oh my god. So I uh, make this statement all the time, but personally, I think that the Sims 3 base game is the most full base game that has ever been released in sims history yeah that's a pretty big statement right um pombella was so fucking funny on it they kept trying to make her do shitty things for drama she's like nah why don't you why don't you give them a hard world yes sims 3 still had great content and base game yes i i totally think that base game had it all exactly sims 3 base game was the most ambitious it was the biggest and it was the most worked on base game in the entire sims history or entire sims franchise now that doesn't go to say i mean of course the, the leap from sims 1 to sims 2 was big right i mean they went from be only being able to view the game in four dimensions to being able to spin the camera on 360 like that took completely overhauling the sims 1's engine and put implementing a new engine in sims 2 okay let's let's say that sims 1 to sims 2 was the biggest leap the franchise has ever taken I'm going to give Sims 2 that, but I think the most well-executed base game was Sims 3 base game. Spark tried to set up Plumbella and I stand by that. Oh my God. 
that kind of sounds like tea and she and she wouldn't go into the team she wouldn't she wouldn't stand for it yes yeah, since two base game all you could do was sit in your house and have children nightlight cleaned up a lot I guess I never played with um Sims 2 base game. I saw Sims 3 like a while ago as I factory wiped my PC. I decided to check out the first patch of the game that, that was in 2009. Why is it so smooth? Why? When is 1.7? Yeah, I know. 1.69 is a fucking mess. That's true. It is true. It is true. There are a lot of issues that they never fixed. Like, and they're pretty game-breaking issues. Like, for example, my biggest gripe with the Sims 3, my biggest, most pet peeve bug that gets on my uh nerves is the fact that when you ground a teenager in sims 3 they are unable to go to school you know even though they're grounded they can't go to school like that that is a definitely a glitch that they probably intended to fix it just never happened or maybe they never noticed and maybe they didn't play test i'm not sure um but that is the biggest if i think of glitches that piss me off that is the number one glitch on my on my list on my shit list <laughs> nightlife was great but the soundtrack really gives me <laughs> i guess i never really like played just sims 2 and like sims 2 nightlife like just those two games because i have ultimate collection so i have like all of them at all times installed on its own without dlc but if you were more you know addicted player like some of us um me um <laughs> the expansion packs added a whole ton of new features Look at all these expansion packs the sims 3 store despite being still uh, oh sims 3 store did you get a glitch with pets adoption? They never show it for me. Yeah, so that's actually a feature of Enros. That's Enros blocking the pet adoption. Uh, the reason why Enros blo blocks the pet adoption is because it creates like a lot of corruption. Were you able to get ultimate collection? Yes, I was. Yeah, I got it before they pulled it. Um, but yeah, the, the pet adoption is blocked by Enros because it creates like corruption in like Sims that have no... I, I exactly i forget what their reasoning for it is but you have to go like enros advanced adopt adopt pet oh so is that air trap yeah yeah uh, i don't know if it's air trap or if it's master controller blocking the adoption um but you have to go through the enros menus to adopt and then it'll bring the same exact uh prompt that you get when you call on the phone i guess it, I, I forget exactly what the reasoning is but i do remember i looked into it and it is a result of and Ross blocking it. So yeah. So Sims 3 store. We've kind of already talked about it on this live stream. It's all the same with babies too. Yeah. So it's pets and babies that they block it. But the Sims 3 store now. Oh, I have a very mixed relationship with the Sims 3 store. I have a very love-hate relationship. So I dislike the Sims 3 store because it normalized microtransactions in the sims 3 franchise that's my biggest problem with the sims 3 store now i like the sims 3 store because of the amount of content that is optional that they put on the sims 3 store so for example this is a screenshot right here business as usual bistro this is a whole expansion stuff pack whatever the fuck they call it game pack for sims 4 whereas you know in the sims 3 you can just buy it right here and just buy the specific item you know the the this, this this oven right here this oven that allows you to do the uh menu stuff and that sort of thing i like how you can pick and choose what sort of objects you wanted so like if i didn't want let's say i liked sims 2 open for business but i hated how i could make my own grocery like i i don't want to be able to i don't want to fuck with the registers and stuff but i liked the fact that i could have like a restaurant in Sims 3 store, I can kind of just pick and choose what items I want. There's also tips to block stuff from that folder. Sims 3 store popped up everywhere and started clogging up my game, so I constantly kept, 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 kept deleting the featured items folder. There's tips to block the stuff. I love how Diego knows, like, everything about the Sims 3, like, all the, like, the little hacks. He's like, oh, I'm going in, I'm hacking in. <laughs> Honestly, the first three games still hold up so well. Well, it's a problem from with, when a game from 2000 offers more than a game from 2021. Exactly that's that's like the easiest you put that in mo the most succinct succinct way you possibly could it's a problem when a game from 2000 offers more than a game from 2021 i can't get that damn folder to stop clogging up help <laughs> yes diego drop your enlightenment in the chat i not you exposing me maddie <laughs> everyone wants to know how you block the items in that folder drop drop your drop your wisdom in chat <laughs> uh, but as i was saying i 
think the Sims 3 Stores microtransaction model, it's shitty. Like that's that's no secret. Like it's it's bad. But I think that some of the worst worst some of the best clothing best objects best furniture best worlds come from this right here from the sims 3 store uh personally my favorite world is lucky palms which obviously comes from the sims 3 store my favorite clothing set for teenagers is the jet set for teenagers or like the prom clothing i think some of my my my, my most favorite stuff that has come from ea made maxis made clothing and hair is from the sims 3 store right here so I don't have a problem with the Sims 3 store because they were putting out such great content. I think if they were putting out shitty subpar clothing items, hair that was unusable, and some of it is unusable, don't get me wrong. This this business as usual be show, fucking unusable if you don't install a fix for it. But I do love that they have some really great stuff on the Sims 3 store that is, I use it in like my everyday Sims gameplay. And that's more than I can say about open for business or the, um, what is it called? Dine out for Sims 4. Like that is what, $15, $10 and your Sims, it takes them six, seven hours to eat. Are you kidding me? It takes my Sim a whole day to eat one meal in Sims 4 dine out. How is that okay? Like did no one play test? Did no one play test? I would love to know. <laughs> so I like Sims 3 store. Basically, what I'm trying to say here is I like Sims 3 Store because they put out really good stuff and it wasn't like shittily made or ugly or whatever. But I dislike Sims 3 Store because it normalized microtransactions in the Sims 3 franchise and that sucks. Dine Out was so bugged, even I like the pack. I like, I like, I like Dine Out as well. I just hate the fact that it takes my Sims like seven hours to eat one meal. Are you kidding me? I have to spend a whole day for them to eat a whole meal. Oh. <sighs> Priced. Also added additional optional content. For example, the baby swing, the toddler walker, and the playpen, and even like the boardwalk roller coaster venue or a few of my favorite premium content items. But at the end of the day, these are still optional items. You can still teach your toddler to walk without a walker. You can still, you know, put your baby in the crib without having a baby swing. Right. I think that's you the biggest point here. I think that's the biggest point that Asmara is making a really good point here. These are all optional. These these Sims 3 store objects are at the at the end of the day, they're optional. You you don't need you know the baby walker like she just said to to teach your kid how to walk. I think that's a big flaw in The Sims 4 is that, like, what was it? Um, I guess, I mean, toddlers were patched into base game, right? Toddlers are patched into base game Sims 4, but in order to have actual stuff for your toddlers to do, you need parenthood. You need parenthood to actually have your toddlers be able to do things and not just stand there for their rest of their toddler years, right? That's a big problem I have with Sims 4 is yes they added toddlers patched into the base game but in order to have them actually do things you have to buy parenthood which sucks you shouldn't have to buy a additional thing to get a feature that should be in base game yeah oh my god diego this, this folder yeah okay i'm not gonna read that but <laughs> that's for you guys and i'll do it after my do i have it Simpsons store is no longer updated but has special photos properties. Oh. I'm trying to like read it quickly. There you go, guys. <laughs> there's your Sims. There's how you get your featured items to not get clogged. <laughs> Fun and have visited many other lots without having a roller coaster. So at the end of the day, like stuff was not missing from the core of life simulation experience if you couldn't get these overpriced store items. However, the main element that the Sims 3 did not necessarily seem to take from Will Wright's example is the well-tested interface. It is no secret that the Sims well 3 has problems with um, performance is probably its biggest drawback for the majority of players. This is Lindsay Pearson. She's the general manager of the Sims. Oh my god, guys, here's the interview. Here's a fucking interview with Lindsay Pearson. Speaking on the performance issues of the Sims 3. Like we knew that Sims 3 had trouble with performance, not even not even five years in, like even slower and slower. Yeah. Um, but computers are getting faster and faster each year, which is making the Sims 3 more playable to a degree. I realize that that's not the case for everyone, and there's just the Sims 3 has issues with performance in general. Okay, but it's the fact for me, it's the fact that Lindsay worked on the Sims 3 and she's like like she's shit talking it. It's kinda like when you work at a job and then you quit that job and then you go to a new job and you shit talk your old job. It kind of just looks Trigger warning. <laughs> it kind of just looks um sloppy, I guess. For her to sit here and say like that she's, I don't know. Is the security then? That's that's the bit I can use. If you have multiple users such as your system, make sure you click on. Oh, okay, you're just talking about the. 
how you get get that to stop yeah generating um i feel like such a scammer I, I guess i technically bought an account off someone on ebay for sims 4 but the sims 3 store gave us so much content despite me downloading it mostly off of all tumblr yes there's a there's a tumblr you can download the sims 3 store items for free just look it up windows 10 stop yelling at me please <laughs> so anyway uh lindsay just not a not a fan not a fan at all don't think she's a very good like leader of the sims 4 i love this painting of bella goth I love it so much. I want this in my room somewhere. Lindsay tried to jump ship and unknowingly jumped on a Titanic. Yeah. Literally, it will not let me. That's a really good analogy, actually, Twitch Witch. That's a really good analogy. Getting faster and faster each year, which is making The Sims 3 more playable to a degree. I realize that that's not the case for everyone, and there's just The Sims 3 has issues with performance in general. But maybe comparing our computers now than like five years ago, The Sims 3 is definitely becoming more playable. And granted, probably not with all the content installed. It can work. You just have to learn how to get it to work, but it can work. Right. Okay. All there thing. we go. Can we? Can we? Can like we five fucking years ago? The Sims 3 is definitely more Listen that again. Not with all the content installed. It can work. It can work. You just have to learn how to get it to work, but it can work. I feel like it's it's people. Once again, I said this in the first minute of this video. Lindsay, Lindsay Pearson is shay and sus. <laughs> Lee will not let me apply it. Well, Lindsay Pearson tried to jump ship. That's so true. Sims 3 plays better with newer PC parts now. So, um, here's my thing. I said this in the first minute of this video when Asmara put a tweet on screen that of someone saying that the Sims 3 is a lag simulator. Now, once again, I'm a Sims 3 fanboy. Oh, shady. You meant shady. I'm a Sims 3 fanboy, so I'm going to defend Sims 3 till the day I die. But it's people that do not want to learn how to fix the Sims 3 that will sit here all day long, call it a laggy um, game that does not run well on modern hardware. But they're also the same people that do not try and get it to work. They don't care to get it to work. They expect to download it right off of origin and have that shit work just from the out, out out of the gate and to them i would say does your fucking game of sims 4 work right out of the fucking gate because you need the the simulation lag fix to in order to play the sims 4 like no sims game thus far has worked right out of the gate none sims 2 does not work right out of the gate sims 3 does not work right out of the gate and sims 4 does definitely not work right out of the gate so to these people that are calling the sims 3 a lag simulator what other sims game in sims history has worked right out of the gate this is more of a ea electronic arts slash max's problem of making their games not work right out of the gate rather than it being like a Oh, Sims 3 is a lag simulator. You know, no, no Sims game thus far, unfortunately, has worked without a little bit of fixing. So stop calling it a fucking lab, lag simulator, you fucking people on Twitter. Thank you. Mic drop. <laughs> like I have a shitty laptop, Intel i3 processor vibes, and my game lag, my game like lags, but not that much. The game is still very much playable. I talk about the Sims 3 lagging and have super water and tree, and tree detail max out on their lower end computer like baby, what did you expect? <laughs> that's so true that's so true so anyway um basically no sims game has worked right out of the out of the box so please don't expect sims 3 to thank you it is the best game in the sims franchise you just have to learn how to get it to work but it can work all that being said the sims 3 really added to the flexibility and the customization to the sims franchise some people would argue the sims 3 could have too much customization which i honestly didn't really think of that perspective until mm. this research so i guess you know if that's the case and you're you're not really necessarily playing the sims for all the things you don't necessarily need all the color reels and all the options the customization can be overwhelming and it's obviously laggy so if you prefer a gameplay that's a bit more structured this is um yeah the uh creative style sucks it's so laggy creative style sucks ass but i love her Three may not be the best option for you, and that's fair. But I feel like The Sims 3 gave us a great balance of set storylines that we could play out, as well as giving us room for our own storytelling and our own game. And although not a perfect replica, in hindsight, I feel like The Sims 3 did a pretty good job reflecting a lot more of Will Wright's initial example. It maintained that heavy focus on. This oh, that was a really sweet point to add. This is what I'm saying. I can tell as Mara is a Sims 3 player because she keeps referencing Will Wright, who's like, obviously like he made The Sims, and I like how she said that. It's a really good example of what Will Wright had in mind, and I and I personally I feel like that too. I think. When Will Wright thinks about what Sims game most accurately represented his vision back in, you know, the early 2000s or 2001, I think The Sims 3 is a shining example of what Will Wright wanted. From the customization to the storytelling to the personalities, what the 
uh, that, that the Sims have. I think Asmara makes a really good point right here. She, has, she used to have other channel. I've known her for like a few years now. Um, I had a laptop with an i3, eight gigabyte RAM. Sims 3 run pretty decent. Be decent. This Sims, 3's, Sims 3 was Will's vision. I definitely agree with that. I think if if we were to ask Will Wright, it, it's also interesting too, because if you guys have noticed, and I tried to do a little bit of research before, but Will Wright does not speak about Sims 4. He, he, will, not, he will not answer questions. He will not talk about it. He kind of shuts it down when he's asked about Sims 4. And I think that says a lot when the when the guy that came up with the fucking Sims concept shuts down the newest game in his own baby. Like that that is his child and he will not talk about it. That's saying something. That's saying something, right? Like that that just says a lot about the game. Imagine he said like it's a failure. Thank you for some time. <laughs> exactly. It's a failure. Let's move on. Make the Sims 5. <laughs> the Sims 3 was too too early for her time, to be honest, but I'm so glad she's here. Wait, Sims 3 is Johnny Zest with the land grabs. Right. It's like estranged. Johnny Zest is, is estranged <laughs> from the land grab family. Sims individual behaviors, but just gave players more personal freedom on the matter. So now let's talk about the Sims 4 next week. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So there is Asmara's video, guys. We got through it. Uh, I'm going to bring myself up in... Uh, this view now hello i'm bigger now hello hello um so asmara did a great job asmara i would like to thank you for letting me watch your video i mean i didn't ask you permission but <laughs> thank you for uploading this it actually is a really great video um and i have to ask you guys please if you if you are not subscribed to asmara please do it it's just a-s-m-a-r-a -A -A, asmara i'm gonna link it in chat actually um she makes fantastic videos she makes life is strange videos as well guys she is so good like i i know i know like ugh, i i don't know and, and, and another thing is she, is she does like not only does she do commentary oh my god i'm losing my voice my voice is just going out the window right now um but not only does she do commentary about like uh chronicling the sims franchise but also she does about black women in the gaming industry and i think that that's a really interesting um topic to to hear from like a black woman's perspective so yes i i, I definitely recommend asmora um i'm gonna start some up some music so we can have this little conversation she came through with part two yes she did so we'll because this video is a lot longer and i my voice is going it's 11 30 at night i still have a paper to write so i'm gonna wrap up stream um pretty soon i've been streaming for almost five hours oh my god <laughs> but uh basically long story short i think that let's let's do some tea here let's let's let me let me give you guys a little summary it's almost 5 a.m here oh my god you guys got fucked up sleep schedules holy shit 4 a.m 3 oh my god 4 a.m 4 30 a.m Jesus Christ. <laughs> you guys are on that European time. 4.35. <laughs> um, personally, for me, here's, here, let me tell you guys what I think. Want to hear my, want to hear my ranking? And this is just my own personal opinion. But this is also going to be biased because you got to remember, I'm a Sims 3 YouTuber. So what I say from here on out is biased, obviously. Um, but I got to say sims 3 is my number one boo like she's mine she's my baby um then sims 2 then sims 4 was that a surprise to anyone i don't think so um a lot of people say sims 2 is their number one and and i feel like if you ask them why sims 2 is their number one game or why sims 3 isn't their number one game rather like why like ask them why why isn't sims 3 your favorite game um i think that they would probably say that the lag like holds them back but that hurts the sh like that hurts me so much it hurts it hurts me that someone could be like discouraged from playing a game because they deem it like too laggy you know what i mean so what i'm trying to say here is if you ever hear people say that sims 3 is a lag simulator tell them a cotton sock gets triggered when you say that end of story <laughs> um anyway guys i'm gonna end the stream right here this was such a fun time um once again thank you for mystical and um let me let me milo did you milo a uh, mystical mystical did bits so thank you for the bits as well uh, mystical and milo you guys i thank you for your sub and your bits your subs 
and uh yeah thank you for the pregnancy noise as well because you know when everyone anyone subs then a little pregnancy noise comes on <laughs> every like 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 um i think it was diego said it every time maybe it was twitch witch every time someone subs ariella gets another baby <laughs> she she has babies like it's her hobby honestly uh but yeah guys um i am going to see you next saturday i just want to let you guys know that my uh recording schedule is now um, monday wednesday friday and vods will be uploaded of this stream will be uploaded on sundays i just don't have the time to do seven seven day a week streams anymore it's just so much like or not i just said streams video like i'm fucking losing it sorry i've been talking for five hours straight this is so much fun have a great rest of your night thank you guys i appreciate it um but monday wednesday friday lepacy episodes sunday this vod or any of my, any of my other streams um will be will be uploaded so thank you guys once again if you've diego um 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 namsok is that your name namsok i know you're i know you're a k-pop stan because i see you on twitter <laughs> i don't know no n x m is it like namsok i think so do you stand namjoon and sokjin is that your ship sorry that's like a bts question i don't mean to like throw anyone else off but i used to be a bts fan good night this is so cool to find you're such a great commentator and streamer thank you milo milo since you gg thank you thank you thank you yeah like namsok okay gotcha so i'll just call you namsok from now on i'll call you namsok um but thank you guys that have been here the entire stream i really do appreciate it your support is means a lot to me and i'm glad that i could uh provide you with some free entertainment yeah but namsok for namjoon and hosok because oh your biases okay gotcha um yeah but then thank you guys for watching um good night everybody i hope you have an amazing night and i will see you all once again live 7 p.m saturdays 10 p.m est on every saturday um but yeah guys bye bye have a nice night guys or morning have a nice morning you european people <laughs> bye guys